I like to call this people. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Here it's going to be running late. He's at a funeral. Mrs. Kelly. Here. Mr. Sapiro. Here. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Basor. Here. And Ms. Strail. Here. Okay, did everybody get my text message that I sent out? So, yes, okay, yes, 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 okay, yes, yes. All right, public notice of this, of this meeting. Yeah, you got to put the microphones on. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the clerk in the following matter. One, post on the bulletin board of the Robert Clark's office in January 5th, 2022. Two, email to the retrospect and current post in January 5th, 2022. New business discussion for this meeting. Before we get to that, I just want to say a couple quick things. So, there's a lot of people in the audience, which is wonderful. Uh, I want to actually direct my opening remarks to everyone in the audience. So, the way it works in the borough form of government is the mayor is the executive. Um, however, uh, everything I do has to be approved by council. So regardless of something that I may say, or that I may suggest, or that I may push somebody in a certain direction, until there is a majority of council that votes in the affirmative, it is not approved. So make that very clear. You guys don't need to convince me. We need to convince the members of council for their actions. So to preface anything that an, an individual who comes in and asks for something, let's, let's be clear. I, 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 I respect anybody who comes in and asks us questions, but they may not know the law. They may not know the procedure. They may not understand how local government works. So we need to make it clear to everyone when we're speaking to them to try to help them out. Once again, one of the, one of the phone calls I got today was someone complaining about weeds, calling me directly, not understanding that there's a process or complaining about property maintenance things. Now, I don't mind responding to someone. I have no problem forwarding that message on. But at the same time, there's a process. And both people have rights. Even the person that's being complained about has rights. Both sides have rights. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. yes. Um, and the second thing is just understand about uh, movements with personnel, with laws, or anything like that. Everything is done at a council level. Everyone on council has been on council for more than one term, so they, they've experienced dozens of meetings and understand that to pass a, an ordinance, it takes two readings. To pass a resolution, it's a simple uh, uh, resolution, but the resolution ends at the end of the year. So if we do something by resolution, it must be reaffirmed in the following year. So at the beginning of every year, we do do things uh, to do that. So that's my, my little speech. All right, so first thing we have is public hearing on ordinances 2209 and 2210. I don't have the, can you tell me which one 09 and 010 is? Uh, sure, 2209 is the uh, holidays. Okay, so if everyone recalls, we uh, changed our holiday schedule to match what the federal employees actually get, and we're following mostly what the state does. 2210? Uh, murals and public art. Okay, so at this point we only have a draft on that and, I, and we're going to have further discussion on it. All right, does anybody have any questions on that so far? Okay. Chapter 159 for clean communities. I think everyone might be aware we were awarded about $17,000 in clean communities uh, funding. It came in after the budget was introduced, so we have to in insert it into the budget. How much was it for you? It was 17000 and change. I think it was very similar to previous years. Uh, amended cannabis resolution. One of the uh, applicants changed their legal name. Yeah, their location. Oops, oh, pardon me, their location. But they were already approved. It was an approved location. Where I, 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 I think the, our attorneys reviewed it and felt that it was just a, a minimal change of the name. Would your minimal change of the location to a uh, location again that we already approved for a second? Cannabis business, so we're just sliding one into the other. Okay. Is there any discussion on that? I mean, I guess it's a lot of fluidity. There's supposed to be a meeting tomorrow uh, with the, the 
it's Canada's Regulatory Commission, so maybe we'll get some guidance tomorrow. Oh, thank you. So who is this? The Canada uh, Cannabis? Faisal. It was the one that Faisal. It was the one that was located at Chilikowski. I believe so. Moving to the, the one on the Blackbird's no. bike. Yeah. Yeah. Backwards. Basil is going into Chanowski, and it was Buddies that pulled their name out. Right. So Buddies retracted oh, their name okay. for whatever reason. Okay. Basil is moving from one property to another. another. Both, both were, were approved, and both locations were approved. Okay. Preliminary. At this point, we have two um, applicants. Is that what we're saying? I think we're down to. I think we're from four to three. We have three. We're down to three now. Three. So we only have three names in that. And, and how many licenses are we allowing? Two. two. We allow two. Credit, but depending on the state approval, and, and it's only a, it's only a preliminary. They still got to go in front of the planning board. Yes, uh, and get the license from the state. The state hasn't given out any uh, no. strictly recreational. I think most of the ones are medical that they allow for recreation. But I could be wrong. They might have done a few recreational. There's like twelve. Oh, just strictly yeah, recreational. Yeah, like Mel Arm, Mel Arm, those are yeah, but those are medical. medical. They were medical, and they allowed them to sell. Right. Yeah, but I don't think they have any strictly recreational ones that they approved yet. Is that right? I'm not certain, but yeah, I'm not certain. They, they those two locations are going to go. Okay. Uh, discussion of sewer department issues. Who wants to take that? Yeah. Uh, I guess one of the issues was the uh, sewer operator on record. Uh, Billy Myers and myself, we uh, took the course for the operators, and then with that, we were allowed to uh, hold the license of C2 operator for one year while we're taking the test. So with that, for uh, July 1st, looking at promoting Billy to C2 operator, license operator of record, we'll have Larry from Belmar, and I'll continue on as the uh, backup. Actually, Mr. Wozo did see and send an email out on June, on June 22nd. So change, sewer operations changed to July 1st. So that shared service that we have, it was a shared service, or was it just, so we have to notify that gentleman we're no longer using it? He's already been, we've already talked to him, let him know that we're looking at uh, changing it. Okay. I think we have to somehow formally notify him. Okay. Like I criticized about formally notifying somebody once, so try to avoid that again. Uh, Larry will be removed from Belmar for sewer operator on record. Billy Miles will become the license operator of record for the run lead sewer on that for one year until completion of test. Train increase to C2 operator, how it goes up will remain C1 as a backup until passing. Do you want that? Do we need a formal, we need a formal resolution? We will. We just need to evaluate what was already budgeted for this year. Okay. Well, if we're taking the money away from Larry, it should hopefully be close to that, right? He was a flat fee. He was a flat fee. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with this? By law, we're required to have a C1 and a C2 operator. Neither uh, Bill or, or Harry had the license. We've been waiting for them to finish it, so now it sounds like they're getting close. Well, congratulations, both of you. Yeah. Was that it? No, we have several other items, but I don't know if you wanted to do that or during department reports. Okay, so let's see. Still leaves two full time positions left in the DPW. Do you want to? You want to? We can talk about personnel because he's not a current employee. No? A prospective, we can't talk about. No, I'm not talking about prospective. But I would say that if you want to talk about prospective, I think the committee can make a recommendation to do something. The only thing I'll talk about the perspective is it should be on our terms so that it works for the department and works financially. So if you want to bring somebody back. No, that's, that's not on this. That's not on this? It was on this email. No, it's not. Oh, replace the email. You want to the replace email. those two guys? You want to put that on hold? No. Okay. Because well, we, we have to, because we're up with the six months on the, on the, the part time, okay. the temporary, so we need to push him and what's going to happen is he's going to replace Jake and then Jake we budgeted for him to uh, be promoted to uh, full time. So Jake moves up, the other guy moves to, to the part time, part -time for 30 hours. And then you want to backfill the last guy. And then we'll, we'll look at it from there and bring it up a discussion in another meeting. Yeah. But this way the resolutions can be done to meet the, our payroll clerk's yeah. requirements and, and everything can be flowed. So you want uh, Brandon to be 30 hours part time. Yes. And Jake will be full time. Yes. Okay. And you have to give me the rate. I don't know. Yes. 
Was there anything else on the sewer? Did you want to talk about forest mm -hmm. or anything like that? Did you want to wait for a crane's report? Or? Uh, the only thing on that part is just, uh, just we'll, we'll go to wait for the reports. Okay. And I'll talk about that with you. All right. Uh, discussion of 2% increases for non contractuals. So, one of the things we have always done is we always wait till the contracts have been settled. And we've always waited till the budget has been adopted before we make any changes to people who are not under contract. Um, I believe Shelley did put in all the budget to give everyone 2% raises, basically. Uh, and what that would mean would be people, uh, I don't want to give all names, but I'll give some titles. They would be uh, the assistant superintendents of the public works department and the sewer department. Um, it would be the judge. Yeah, we did this case. Yeah, I mean, it would be the judge, and it, and it would be members of council. But we don't do ourselves until the budget's been adopted and things like that, in case we can't do it. I think that some of the, some of the uh, senior officers in the police department are not contractual, but we've made some arrangements for them they think we're past that, or am I wrong? I don't know, I hate to put you on the spot. We can talk about it later if you yeah. want to talk about it off the yeah. side. I think some of the employees, as long as everybody's open to the idea, I think Shelly can at least make a list of the employees that have not been... Um, we're we talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So she'll make a list, and then we can do that. Uh, I will say that uh, we did settle, if everyone remembers, we settled the contract with the GWU, and basically they received uh, greater than 2% raise if they attain, attain certain things and stuff like that. So even though 2% seems to be the magic number, I think that uh, uh, for not for non contractuals I think it's okay. For different departments, I think we can evaluate it the way we I, li I like the fact that it's in line with, you know, it's comparative too. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also our, our cap, our, our cap's too yeah. Yeah. But if you recall, what we did is we raised the starting salary for police officers, we raised the starting uh, salaries for front office people. We did do those kinds of things. Uh, we still have the contract that's expired, but the you know uh, it's expired since December, and they have not reached out to us. And until they reach out to us, it's not my obligation. No, to they do anything. Okay. All right. Um, I have a question. Are we putting these on the one the ones that I have here in the email? Are they going on? Uh, I didn't read the email. I'm sorry. I missed the email. You know, I think what we should do is submit it back to council to review it one more time to make sure if there's anything that's missing, we can talk to each department, make sure that we've, we've, we didn't miss anybody and try to be fair, and then just put it on for, uh, for the next caucus. Well, then we can put it on for the council meeting because the budget. We couldn't change the salary. discuss it? Well, I think they can discuss that at the committee level and make a recommendation for the next meeting. It's Tuesday. You guys can handle it, right? You want to wait a month, or you want to do it uh, Tuesday? Uh, so, are you okay with Tuesday? Yeah, I, I'll yeah, do it Tuesday. Tuesday. I, can, I can speak after. Yeah, get it over with. Yeah. yeah please. Yeah, so do it. We're only talking about a handful of people, yeah. of non-contractual people. Pretty much everybody else has a contract. Yeah. Um, what else? And then we'll go around the room now, if, everyone, if there's nothing else on the agenda. Okay. So the meeting's going to be pretty light. Other than, you know. I know you're not going to be here for the meeting. No. So, my report basically is that night. I don't really have a report. Yeah, that that's fine. So. Yeah, and there's nothing else to discuss about anything else I, in the department. I don't so hear to. Yep. Ms. Passion, did you want to start? Sure. Okay, let's start. Can I have this over this way? Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about our events that are going to happen for the 4th of July um, at the Harry Williams Community Center, rain or shine, 9.30 in the morning, will be bicycle parade and contest. Uh, scooters are included but non-motorized. I've been asked that question, so I said yes to that. I hope you, is that okay with you? Is yeah, that okay with you, Rich? Yeah. Scooters? Non-motorized scooters and bicycle parade contest? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 945 will be the baby contest registration and 10 o'clock will be the baby parade and contest. Awesome. So the categories are going to be, I, I took out a category, and so it's going to be youngest, patriotic, comical, best impersonation, fancy dress, most original. I know it's today. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay, 
so we have youngest. We have youngest patriotic comical. Comical. Best, yes, most comical. Best impersonation, fancy dressed, and most original. And that that's been our usual. Um, now this is in concert with the Rotary Club, right? This is with no, this the, is the Women's this Club. Is the the Women's Club does the baby parade, and the Rotary Club is the bicycle. Um, and, 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 and let me go over it again. Yes, go ahead. Youngest, mm -hmm. patriotic, mm -hmm. fancy dress, comical, best impersonation, impersonation, and most original. What is the one you took out? I took out the flute. Remember, we had the flute, and then they would put maybe a lot of kids on there, and I didn't have sometimes enough. Well, I, we always had enough toys, but oh, I didn't yeah. have enough big toys, so yeah, exactly. I thought that. So it's the youngest, patriotic, fancy dress, comical, yes. best impersonation. Most original. Most original. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the one that's missing is the best flute. Yeah, the flute, we're, we're taking that out. We took that out. So, that, that'll, so that'll encompass floats. All this will encompass floats. Yes. Okay. Uh, you must be a Runnemy resident to enter uh, into our uh, contest. The rain parade, and this is going to be rain or shine. Under five. Under five. Make sure it, the kids are under five. Yes, the kids in the baby parade are under five. The kids in the bicycle parade, we usually take teenage, you know, age oh, 12. Yeah, and whatever. 12. It's whatever. Um, it will be inside the Harry Williams. Rain or shine. Yeah, oh, that's great. Okay. I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so. Um, what about the free water race? Uh, free water rice is rich. Did you did you get my email about the free water rice about checking out? On the free? It's okay. We will have water rice. If I have to go buy it myself, we'll get water rice. Um, the rain date of uh, the parade starts at one o'clock, and the setup is for the lineup is for twelve thirty. I've been telling a lot of people just to meet us at the um, uh, Gardner's Funeral Home in the parking lot. Uh, we are giving out prizes for the best flu. And that's a $50, $75, and $100 gift card. And uh, we're going to give out prizes for the best best of show in antiques, uh, antique cars, second and second and third. And I have really nice plaques. They're actually in the borough. Did you, did you see them? Look on the table. Yeah, they're really nice. They're really hey. nice. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. They're really nice plaques. Um, the rain day. The rain day for the main parade uh, is Sunday, July 10th at 1 o'clock. And as always, the VFW will be having hot dogs and refreshments after the parade. So uh, that's always a good time. And I do believe they're going to have a band out there. So, wow. should be, yeah, should be nice. Uh, fireworks and will be in Barrington on July 3rd, Sunday, July 3rd at dusk. Uh, we have contributed fifteen hundred dollars to their. We always do every year. This year was fifteen hundred. And our our yeah. chief, do you uh, send our police officers there also? Or no, I know the fire company. No. Is, okay, never, I know. Never had to do that. Okay, so I know the fire company. We do send over um, an apparatus. So, and that's the end of my report. If anybody has any questions, you can always call me in regards to that. That's great, Patty. Do, you, do I discuss what I want to discuss later? Uh, why don't we do the reports yes. first, and then we'll do go the through. So just to make the record show that Mr. Farrell's here. Okay. Eleanor has as well. We're going to go right around yeah. the table. My report is going to be on. Yep. John, Mr. Ranieri, did you want to add something? Okay, thank you. Have a mic? No. Uh, knows the mics, all the new mics are in front of that's desk. Oh. And we're waiting on a couple more, I think. Yeah, I that that, that right is here. your job, you know. Yeah. We give them a lot of boxes. Is it 17th and 18th or 18th and 19th? They'll be here okay, to start. So there's a bunch of boxes that hopefully we'll get done. What do they look like? Boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. I'm just going to go down the, in finance, I'm going to go down the checklist that I have here. It's hot off the presses. 6-23 uh, was our closing date for our 2022 uh, bands. Our, our bond anticipation sale. Um, we got a very good rate at 2.38%, which is pretty good uh, for the rates that are uh, out there right now. Today uh, is the maturity date and the rollover date for our 2021 bonds, our uh, bands. 
Our annual audit began June 13th. Our, our auditors will be here throughout the building through August while we await the reports from the state. Um, I'm gonna skip over some prevailing wage things. I'm gonna have Shelly cover that. We were talking about that earlier. Um, and then the second round of the ARP funding should be deposited within a week. Um, and we've also initiated our 2023 New Jersey DOT grant application for Bach Associates. That's in the works. And we've initiated the uh, American Rescue Plan Firefighters Grant. Um, the rest is progress in finance. That's about it. I'm going to keep it short. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Rich. I don't have anything. I'm going to say my report for me. The meeting. That's fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to rely on Mr. Wolves on the meeting now. I haven't been in contact yeah. that much. Okay. Uh, Eric, what's the word? Bob, do you have anything? I know you're. My notes are gone. I'm sorry. We can wait till the council meeting, but you know we have other things to discuss, so we can always discuss that. I'll wait. Do you want to take it out and take it over, Harry? We'll keep with the public works. Yeah, the big uh, item that means for discussion is the phone call that uh, you've had and I've had from uh, Belmar regarding the, the trash trash receptacles. Okay, do you want me to start? Or do you want to start? Go ahead. Sir. All right. So I get a phone call. That's of course I get a phone call. Uh, that there are over forty large trans can trash cans. Right. How many you Over five hundred. No. Okay, so we have an ordinance that says that the trash cans cannot be larger than 32, 32 gallons. And the reason is, is because someone has to lift the trash can up and put it in the back of the trash truck. We have a shared service agreement with Belmar and Mount Ephraim. In the contract, it specifies what is in our ordinance, which we did not create. It's been on the books for 25 years or more, that no can can be greater than, than 32 gallons. In the past, in the past, the uh, uh, Belmar and Mount Ephraim always tried to accommodate everybody by either opening the lids, pulling the pads out, the trash cans are not too heavy, things like that. The larger cans, if you can picture them, they're the same as what Gloucester Township has for their recycling. And that's, they're designed for a different type of uh, uh, truck to grab it uh, mechanically and put it in. Uh, a week or so ago, one of the employees in Belmar reached his hand inside and became a big issue. And so in an effort to protect the employees and to minimize liability to the borough, it was suggested that we reinforce our current ordinance. And what they suggested to us, Belmar suggested, was that one, we talk about it publicly, two, we add it to our, our, our website, letting people know, three, we allow the federal employees to know about it, and any other communications that we can do to ask these people to, I hate to say, maybe they have to get rid of their, they have to get rid of their camp. So, what's that? It's progress. Well, the difficulty is, is that these people spent this money to buy these cans. Yeah, expensive. And they're expensive cans. You don't have one, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you read the ordinance, Mr. No, Smart? I'm a little. I'm not going to lie. I kind of read all that. Yeah. That's why so people buy the bigger cool. ones. The problem with the big ones is, if they, if they, the bags weren't a big problem. But the two issues that I got yelled at about was, and I got yelled at. I get yelled at that that not only that when the residents, when the when the, when the employee pulls the can out, if there's trash in the bottom of it, they get mad that they don't empty all the trash in the bottom. Plus, things that fall out, and people fall out, things like that. So it's definitely an ongoing issue now. Belmar and Mount Ephraim were willing to put stickers on all the cans and say that this can can no longer be utilized for that. Now, we have one apartment complex, I believe, that is bought a bunch of those cans. Now, yeah, apartment complex. Those raccoons are really going to love it. I'll tell What's you. that? They get into those cans. Yeah. They're going to get into these cans easily. Which cans? The 32s? The 32s? Yeah. Well, once again. Well, I mean, I understand that. I'm not well, that you that. know, what's the choice? No, we don't have a choice. Oh, okay. I'm just making a joke. Okay, you're making a joke. I'm start. making a joke. Who's just there? Uh, <laughs> please, 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 everyone laugh. Wrong audience. Wrong audience. Every, every, know your audience. Everyone laugh. Know, know your audience. They're so, opening up those lids yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Is our recycle cans 32? Yes. So that, that's the size. Yes. Is that the size of the recycling cans 32? The recycling cans are actually 28. Yeah. The, 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 the ordinance reads it's 32, 32 gallons, nor less than 10 gallons. Combined weight shall not exceed 50 pounds. 
If Jeanette is big bags, Harry, you can put a lot into But that's, that that's, that's not fair. Let, let's be real clear. The, the choice we have here is, do we go out and buy half a million dollar trucks that have the one arms and mm -hmm. drag it, and we all know that there's difficulties with, with our streets, with the, the roads. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, what about the people who don't have the big ones? And if you remember, Gloucester Chance has spent all that money to buy those, mm -hmm. that equipment, which was great. We've incurred enough extra costs yeah. for a So I feel bad that there's 500 cans out there. I, I, I'm sorry, I must, have, I must have read the whole, whole email. Uh, you know, um, but I understand why cans are too heavy. I mean, I know that uh, it's a problem. And what, what's going to happen is we just need to be prepared for all these people who are going to complain. When it's, well, it has to be enforced. That's what we have. So what, how, here's how it's going to be enforced. What, when is it going to happen? It's starting next week. Oh, sure. You're not, not, you're not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. She, that's that's oh, So for the next three weeks, if you want to wait a month, I'm here. No, no. My phone will work. No, no, no. Right. no, no, no. Get it's ready for some phone calls. It's okay. I'm going to I'll refer everybody to Craig. No worries. Start next week. They're going to attack a lot of When are they going to start? They want notification to start next week. They want notification. They don't want to tell them. Right. You start next week. You want to tell them you can't have this. The can is too big. I don't care about the last week. How long can you can't have it? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. I never said this. We have two cans somewhere. You know, it's a problem. It's a mistake. And, you know, Ignorance is no excuse to the law. This is not a law that we've done a good job of enforcing, but at the same time, it's been on the law. Where, where did we buy these cans? Well, Home Depot sells them. Mm -hmm. Home, Home Depot, Depot, Depot they don't sell them. Yeah, everyone sells them. But the issue becomes, once again, how do you lift it? Now, Belmar did offer to possibly purchase lifters on the back of all their trucks. So that would be an expense to the back. In the Gloucester Township, though, they have some. So but there, there's another way to put a hook on those special cans. And you put a hook on it now. Mr. Sierra made it very clear that that was also onerous to do that and dangerous and it cost. And the modification can be anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars. I understand. So I, I, and, I, and I'm very conscious when I take my trash out that it's not too heavy because I'm the guy who has to. Yes. I refuse to carry my wife's laundry upstairs because she puts too much laundry in the laundry basket. But she makes it 800 pounds. So I have no problem. And they can call me. Any resident in this town can call me because you all know me. I will show up at their house and see if if I can lift the can up. I or if they can lift the can up. I have a suggestion. Maybe the green team can get involved and these can people are worried about what can they do with them. They can convert them to a composting station. Well, that would be well, wonderful. That's a great idea. We can figure out how to help these people with that's the money that they've spent. That's a fantastic idea. You know, that's a hell of an idea. If we could do something like that because that's what we're that's the biggest pushback. I will. The biggest pushback is going to be people saying, I spent $50. I don't know what those cans cost. Feral cat houses. Oh, they're not much. Feral cat houses. So it means that, <laughs> that <laughs> if we buy the 30 <laughs> cans, so the lids lock, so here's the thing. The cats in here. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm elderly, and I use my can, which is larger than 32, because it has wheels. Not every can with wheels is over 32. That's right. Yeah, they do. They Don't do. misunderstand. There are cans yeah. that have wheels. I have under 30. Yeah. 30. yeah. yeah. I have a 32 yes. with wheels. Okay. Now I have a small one. I know. I'm pretty sure it's 32, <coughs> just like the ones that you can pick up a lift. Yeah, I, I, I can't carry my can. No, carry no, carry no that's okay. Car. <laughs> We're talking about the very large ones that are set anyway, away. They're commercial grade. They're looking for. They're, they're looking to stop the usage of the commercial grade cans commercial at the bar or in the front of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay well, have, I have a small one. If, so they have the, if they have the ones with the bar on it, they're the ones that are made from tippers. No, no, they're, already, they, they're already a weight because they're heavy duty plastic. Okay, so you're already getting. So, so they do have 32 yeah. with grapes. Yeah. 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 So that's where they're Yeah. I don't know how big So it's definitely an issue. Our, our trash equipment is not capable of handling these scans. So it's going to be a problem. People are going to complain. Yeah. We just have to work through it. Belmar already did it in their community. So yeah, they did, they did. After the gentleman got hurt, they sent it out. But the mistake that they said that they made is they didn't do a good enough job communicating that they needed to really get it out there much more. What else did you want to talk about? I'll make sure I got the number. Uh, we had uh, <laughs> our generators. We had our, our maintenance done. We do that every uh, every generator. Every six months, we do all of our generators in town. I did send out a couple of department heads who know about it. Um, the director 
Uh, we had two generators right now that are um, out of service. Um, that came up that we're actually looking at approximately twenty-four thousand dollars in uh, repairs. Okay, with that. Um, Can we stop it? Why are they broken? Uh, winter time, could have been freeze plugs, so forth like that. Preventive is all done. So we're doing preventive maintenance. Everything's done. Because by law, we're supposed to have a check. There's that whole air quality yes. thing. And yet they still broke. Yes. I the, the largest one is the one here for our wall. So what we did was not to rely on just a report of, hey, well, we have your car here. Your, your brakes need to be replaced, your windshield wipers, and everything else. We backed up. We actually pulled, pulled oil samples on the generators. We're having them now to have it. That totally looked at to see what actually is the problem and do we need all these repairs. Okay, so that's number one that we're looking at. So we're looking at the whole situation and we'll get back to everybody and keep everybody posted on it. There's two um, down. There, there's two down. Um, I've been in contact with our CFO. We do have finances to replace the re any money in the budget to repair them if necessary. But right now, I'm not jumping the gun to authorize the repairs. We want to make sure that it's warranted to do all the repairs. Is there any, fund, any funding for because these are this was required by after Sandy we were required to get all these generators and things like that. Is there any funding that helps with these kind of things? The repairs we, usually we could look into it. There would be nothing that would give it to us immediately, but maybe something on a reimbursement level. It'll work. And then uh, Forest Avenue pump station itself, we we have one pump down. And we're the secondary pump is on its last leg, so we're looking at funding and designs um, through Pock Associates for that station. Um, we have to get DEP approval and so forth, but that's something that's uh, we we need to move fast with that station, um, especially before Triton comes back in. So, so right ready. now it's just single pump going on and off. Instead single of pump. We're having problems with maintaining the shaft on the pump to handle the flow. You can't just replace the ship. It's obsolete. It's a 1953 pump, and to replace the pump right now, we're looking at over 40,000. Okay, so that's a time. Pump. So we want to, we want to, the station needs to be upgraded anyway. So yeah, an upgrade, you're talking about a couple, several hundred thousand dollars, right? Yes. And we've been discussing okay. that. I thought that station was getting to be done. We well, I think we, we, we kept, for bids. well, we kept uh, pushing, kicking the can. We were going to add it with the sewer extension. Do we bring in a new guy with a new pump? We, I think they have a pump they like to use, but they say it's $40,000. 40, but then you're not replacing everything else. Replace what's in, to replace what's there now, we're looking at approximately 40000 But there's The wet well needs to be upgraded, everything else. I mean, I mean it's 75 years old, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So to put the 40000 in, and then a year later, we're going to be putting exactly. that sign. So we're going to feed the fiscal way. Yeah. So. It's a bunch of pool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I saw your, you know, what was your, what was your uh, doomsday scenario? You were saying about bypass, what was all that? If, if, we lose, <coughs> if we lose that pump and secondary pump that is already, <coughs> we're fully so managed. Thank you. We don't have to put the secondary in use because the barriers are shot, collar shot, we can't get replacements for that. If we actually have to go to bypass, we either have to go up uh, Forest Avenue to Stratford along the curb line, or along Davis Avenue to Sherrington to the first manhole. But Sherrington. there's no mechanism to drop a new pump in. I mean, there's no way to temporarily drop a pump in that's not a pump. Oh, no, no there's some pump breaks you throw a two, you throw two, portable. It's two Godwin pumps with floats and portfolios on top. There's no way to drop one. No. So, so what you're saying, Harry? Uh, Twelve. Okay. So what you're saying, Harry? That even if we invest forty thousand in this pump to keep this station alive, in two years we have to replace the whole station, and that forty thousand would be wasted. Wasted? We can't use that pump if we re. It's, it's obsolete. It's obsolete. The whole setup, Elmer, it's putting a a uh, today's engine in nineteen fifty car. No, no, we'll we'll uh, how do we get it done? That can work on yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get anything to do, right? Parts are hard to get. It's... Why don't we go out and get it? We can make a decision if we can get it done. 
the two hundred thousand yeah. for the regeneration of the. You gotta get bids. You gotta see if anybody's willing to do it. And how long it will take? I mean, you, you know, you're probably talking at least yeah, 120 think, days, right? If not more. We have to go through DDP to do an infrastructure trust fund. DDP takes forever. six months. Forever. So is it easier just to? That's why I keep saying it. there's no other no options left. I'm going to refer to our engineering office to help out with it. Is there any option to rip out what's in there and put something that's adequate? There? So if a pump station goes down, there's no mechanism to run around and if a pump station goes down and drop a pump in until the new pump's ready. Like almost like a bypass, a bypass in the, in the well. No, it's a not bypass just, pump has to pump to somewhere unless unless it's that pump station set up with a bypass. Yeah. It wasn't plumbed. A pipe, a pipe to receive it. Okay, so if you could bring in it a wasn't pump. pump. So if you built it with, could, could we put it in the plumbing to the bypass? Because instead of bypassing down Stratford, could you simply have the bypass at the pump station? Because all you have to do is get the water out of the well into the line, right? Yes. Yes. I'm just, you know, I, I don't know if we can get this done quick enough. If it does break down, is it better to go get, do you see what I'm saying? That you, you put a you put a T in the line so that he could pump the water out of the well into the line, which the line on forest is okay. It's just the pump is not working. The two pumps are not working. I just don't think bypassing all the way down Stratford, you're talking about 500 feet of pipe, piping. Down forest. Yeah, bridging into each driveway and so forth that way, it has to be two pumps. Because you're dropping into what? Two pumps. A van. Yeah. Well, regardless, you have to have two pumps because you have to have a backup pump. So if that pump dies, it's already hooked up into the sequence. So my case requires two. I'm not perfectly out with the uh, I mean, you go out and get, I'm just being realistic that by the time we get the financing, by the time we do it, when it breaks, we're allowed to do things immediately. You sat through the meeting with us. You were here, you were here. Yeah. I thought we had somebody taking care of giving us a price and we were going to get it done. I think those were the pumps that are going into Evergreen Act. Correct. Evergreen Sunset. Sunset. Evergreen Sunset. We want to use the same one here, but. And then any repairs moving forward would do this, but he's saying that kind of pump won't fit into this right. well. We want to replace that whole system. No, I know. Yeah, uh, with, this was a with what we're doing yes. on Sunset and Sunnybrook. Right. However, with that, we haven't started that process yet. We talked about them and we just haven't done it yet. We were trying to get the sewer extension going first. With the, with this starting to fail, I brought that up. I was questioning whether we could use borough funding as opposed to an infrastructure trust just because of this issue. If we do borough um, funding, we don't have to go through the bank. But we, could, but we still need a permit. No. Not if it's a repair. Not if it's a replacement in kind. Well, maybe we need it in kind. Well, Okay. You're, we're not adding a pump station, we're not adding any So you just can replace it upgrade. Replacing what's there, you don't need to go to the EP for that. Maybe we now we're gonna replace it. Maybe using our own funds I just don't know how fast it's going to happen. How much would that cost? It's gonna happen. How much would that cost? I'm waiting to hear from Mr. Bach about it. I think you know, the small stations were Hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars. Right. 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 You're going to pay forty for a pump. So for that, both pumps, but, that, but that's that, without. That, that but we, we can't have to, use yeah. in, in another year or so. so. We also have to replace the wet well. That's twelve feet deep, Aaron. Twelve. So I mean, you're, you're probably looking at one seventy-five to two hundred thousand dollars. I would say. Do we have any money to do that? We're allowed to borrow money to yeah, emergency yeah. stuff. But I mean, if you guys want to authorize a moving forward with the design yeah. and the permits, yeah. that's what, you know, yeah, I mean, It's something we have to do. So if it's in the what, bag. What are we kicking it down? You can't delay. Okay. Yeah. Well, put a resolution on. We'll no, you do today. You want to do it tonight? Yeah, we can. You do it tonight. What's the first and the next resolution? How much? authorizing? We're authorizing the engineer to uh, design and advertise. advertise for the replacement of the wet well and pumps. Without an amount? We're going to estimate it. Well, we don't want to put an amount on the uh, resolution because it's not out for bid. I think you're talking about my no, cost. I mean, oh, your cost. Their cost. I, I, I you want to figure it out before Tuesday? Yeah. Right, we'll, we'll, do a proposal. we'll do a proposal and get it to Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right, Sooner so put that on for Tuesday. You better remember that. Tuesday. Don't let them forget. Before, before we have to do Get a new piece of paper so you don't forget. Yeah, I know you have a lot of notes. I have notes galore because you know yeah. I forget everything. What time do you want to meet tomorrow? What time do you want to meet tomorrow?
Oh, you mentioned it. Six o'clock. All right, what else do you want to do? That's it. Enjoy your trip. Hey, because you haven't gotten your backhoe, you haven't gotten your, your uh, asphalt machine. It's just. You can always cancel when it has to be. If you want to pay for something, sometimes you have to cancel stuff. It's good, but it's hard. Okay. Harry, um, anything else? Here? Um, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Shelly, do you have anything that we want to get out to see? I would like to congratulate Beth Miller. Yes. Yes. I'm going to go to the chief and then Mark because he always has a lot. The lawyer doesn't want to say anything, correct? Right? Okay. <laughs> Which one? The, the, the two ordinances that you're working on. Two ordinances. Yeah, you're always a chance. Oh, sure. So, uh, sure, with the chicken ordinance, the mayor and I were talking about this. Uh, Thank you. You got an audience. All right. Sure. Um, Is that good? All right, so mayor and I were speaking today, and I've talked over the last couple weeks about the chicken ordinance. There is still interest uh, in pursuing it. We're just doing a little bit of research because we're, we're finding out what's worked for other municipalities and how it can best work for Ronnie. So I expect to have a first reading uh, relatively soon, um, but I'll keep everybody posted uh, on how that's going. So You'll send us a copy of it. Of course, of course. For, for review comment, I don't think so. It's there's, the already some, there's already some boilerplate mm. ones we just, you know. Right, we so exactly. And look, the, the, I see the folks here from, from last month, and uh, and look, I think that's a great starting point. We just want to make sure that, that it fits us and just you know, do a little bit more research and talking to the other municipalities firsthand as to what has worked, what they would tweak, uh, what they would do if they could start over again, just so we can, you know, just go forward in the best way possible. So, and I did get a call. Another person is interested in chickens on Union Avenue. So we have to decide also the amount of, uh, of uh, what do you call uh, the, the, the first round. I think we have to consider how many people are interested. You know, sure, we got to change that number. We got to adjust that. Number. And uh, just with respect to the public art ordinance, Mayor, that's the one that you found, I believe, from somewhere in North Jersey. And we just felt that a comprehensive ordinance covering this because you know it, it would be in a bit of a gray area uh, between what can be done. Of course, we support public art, support murals. Just want to make it in a way that uh, best checks all the boxes in terms of you know, gives us a mechanism to set standards. You know, just, just because you, you don't want to make it so that you, you just say yes to something and then the floodgates break out. So just so there's set standards, uh, there's a means for notifying impact residents and uh, just set it up so that we can oversee it is the best word in the most efficient way possible. So we do have, well, we actually have adoption for the current one for Tuesday night. Doesn't mean it can't be amended prior to Tuesday night. Well, or be careful. Or what we could do is always amend it after the fact. We can't. We have no, we have no applications right now. But, so here's what I could say: we can amend it, but it can't be a material alteration. So it would have to depend on what the alterations yeah. are. If it's a minor format yes. alteration, that's no problem. If it's something that changes materially, materially changes. The scope of the ordinance, like I would say, adding a new rule. Okay. Uh, that, that's something I, I, I'm really careful on because of the two reading deliberative process that that we go through. And like, you uh, yes, you have to re-advertise. So it's not if you have to re-advertise. Yeah. So. so I would say if there wasn't anything that was materialistic. If it was just uh, you know tweaking. It depends on what it is, and, and it's hard well, we to can say. Change it even we have no right. applications in right now, so the idea is we can we can keep learning from this. Nothing's to stop yeah. council from just passing a resolution supporting something. Which is what we which is what we did last we month did that. to break us out of uh, out of a, a quandary that we were in. But um, yeah. yeah, so so that's where those those two ordinances stand. I didn't know that it was ones that were already drafted and in the process. That's why yeah, I was aware. That's okay. So, Mr. Barrow? Yes. Are we dragging our feet on this chicken? Not at all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, seems like it. It's only been one month. Well, some people show up that we do something like that. For sure. Last, last meeting, we, uh, we, we got something on the books real quick. So, we just, I, I did you go on the mural? Yes. So, the mural ordinance was the exact opposite. 
that if the people put chickens up, and then we try to pass a, uh, a resolution. That's the mural scam. The mural was starting the next day. We wanted to affirm that we were okay with it. And we said, okay, but, we, but the agreement that I got with the members of council was for everyone to say yes, we had to at least introduce an ordinance. Now, I will say that you're correct. The mural ordinance could be better, but we don't have enough time to get it done. I, I would hate to do a chicken ordinance and have to amend it or fix it because we did something wrong. The mural ordinance, I'm already going to admit it, that I don't think it's as good as it should be. And now he's telling me that I can't substantially change it. Which without bothers sorry, me without a little sorry, bit. Yeah. That's what I was getting. It bothers me a lot that, because there's things in that ordinance that there could be arguments that you might want to change. Now, I know the council the following month could make an amendment to it and things like that because I don't think we're going to hurt anybody who's, there's nobody I don't believe in line for a mural to go up in the next month. They, the, the chicken would be different. I think that the people who want to do chickens want to do it correctly. Because if we store them on the wrong phone, right. it's done. I think murals were very similar. We allow murals to happen before we regulate it. We're not allowing the chickens to happen until we regulate it. We're doing it the right way. Yeah. I was talking to my daughter-in-law, I think. Um, there was a time where if you don't get them by a certain time, you're going to have to wait for the next cycle of chickens. So it's oh, I don't know anything about chickens. I don't know anything about that. But, yeah. but I, I, let's put this over. We're not, we're not talking six months. We're talking one or two, like one. Like August? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that it's 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 but very much in front of us. Right? Well, for us, it's just right. For us, I mean, even for whoever wants to get a chicken. But ours is better. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You just don't get them. You gotta. Right. They gotta right. Be you have to get the cube. You have to get. You have to get, well, have to get approved. They, they gotta be a certain. So it's still, it's still gonna be a process. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's, you just don't get. You just don't get a chicken. Do you know, government is slow. Uh, uh, Bob, I, I would expect at this meeting next month. That famous last words, but to have okay. a draft circulated Thank or a council you. review will comment. Well, we already have some. We have a starting place. I mean, yeah. what was presented last month is a great starting place. And just like the example of the gentleman on union that asked for the chicken, you know, not that I have an affinity to him, but I, I, I do think it would be great to have maybe, you know, more than just a few people yes. that showed up to the meeting as a, 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 that initial group of people. That do it. You know, like he wanted to go out and buy the chicken coop. And I said, Well, I don't know what chicken coop's going to get approved. How do you go buy a chicken coop before you know where you can put it and how big it's? It's just like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, so I'll give you guys the name of the person on Union if you want to get him part of the group. Because what that'll do is help out with what, you know, what, how it's going to happen. Thank you. I won't tell you the name of the public, I'll wait till we have a You can get them all. Uh, Jake, did you want to go on? Uh, it's been a last. This time, this time every year is busy. Last week we had the Carnival, the Long Festival. Our officers did an outstanding job. It was busy, busy, busy with the limited manpower that we that we have out there. Uh, this week is a tiring week. It's our uh, Junior Police Academy, which we love. Mm -hmm. We have the all-time high of kids this year. All time of I think in the late 50s. Last year we had 25. So our officers again are doing a fantastic job. Yeah. <laughs> Walker was asleep. Yeah, good. Is your wife's phone? Um, good Friday night, I sent you guys an email. Personally, invite you guys. 6 30, we had to move to the Bolt School Gymnasium in the rear because of the amount of kids and uh, you know, the family members who will show up. Well, Sergeant Burns, Captain Murray, and I all put something nice together like a regular police academy. When I graduated, it was in a, a gymnasium in college. So that'll be a good feel. The kids have been great. We love it. And it's grown like crazy. So, other than that, everything's been fantastic. You guys are doing an outstanding job. You want to tell me anything about code enforcement? And we brought that up. Tell, tell us, everybody, that how it's going. Code enforcement's been outstanding. I mean, we're communicating with people. I'm going to bring them to court. No, absolutely no. Necessary. And I get, I'll get involved. Like, like it's just different now. Bob comes into my office every morning. I said, "What do you got going on?" He addresses everything he's got going on. And if I have to get involved, I'll make some phone calls to people, and you know, it falls under the police chief and the police department. So I, I'm going to get my hands involved in anything that falls under me. It's been working fantastic. The so buck goes out there, he dresses it, lets me know what's going on. If a resident has a problem, they can call me directly. It's not like, oh, I want to bother the police chief. I welcome that stuff. If I, if there's an issue, I like to get involved when it's under my umbrella. So everybody needs to know if there is anything like that, they can call me. 
you know, and I'm you to push people so to the police there, department. Yeah. Well, so if there's a violation, you tell them about their violation. Yes. Okay. And then do you give them so many days to, do you send out a letter? Do you well, Buck, Buck handles employees? that. We don't go right to site no more. We kind of change our things. We can work with the residents. It's like Buck will go out there. Talking. And it's, and it's yes. working. Yeah, it's working yeah. fantastic. And like I said, I, I get involved if there's, if there's something that I can handle or I need to address, I'll I'll show up to the place where I have to be. Yeah, I think our past practice of sending a letter out just seemed too yeah. formal. Yeah. Or well, you got too... a letter and then you got it certified. So you got Yeah, and it looked I mean we were spending a lot of money on certified money. letters. Yeah. We were waiting. But, but, but it's been working fantastic. And it, and it didn't work. Yeah, it, it didn't, didn't come to court and No, I've had residents call me and say, What Chief, why are you calling me? I said, Well, the the, the, the property maintenance guy falls to the other oh, police chief. So if I got to get involved and help out and make the situation it's better, that's what we're going to do. Now, borough ordinance, so the example of the borough ordinance for the trash can, would that be property maintenance, code enforcement? Who enforces the trash can? That, that, that might fall under you also, which might help us out a lot. Yeah, so now you've got the trash cans on your hands. I'll confirm. Okay. Well, because I don't think it's a zoning officer issue. I mean, public works has no mechanism to uh, to enforce it. Is that for under Bernie Moore? No. <laughs> I mean, public works can do the site. They can put the sticker on the can and let them know that they need to change. Why would there be an issue past that? Well, because people are going to push back. Really, John? Call you or they're going to dump the trash on yes. the floor? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. yes. People have literally yes. And that's now it's a police issue. Now it's a police issue. Now, yeah, and enforce it. We want to prevent it. We want to prevent it. We want to prevent it. The whole point of the trash and code is compliance rather than punishment. Yes. 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 And that's where it's working good with the uh, While we're on that, Littering law, right now. how do the people get rid of those trash cans? Well, well, I John, think John's idea was a great idea. It's fantastic. Take some holes in the bottom. Let's say they don't want to compost. Yeah, really. Now they have these big trash cans lying around. Go on the other side of Eastern Avenue, no, where, where it's Gloucester Township, put a free wait, can, everybody take it. Do they have a trash can? Yeah. If, if you read our ordinance also, it allows people to put 10 cans out there. They're allowed to put one large object, two, one large, two, two large two objects, large and we, they can recycle their, any of their own. Well, yeah. So the ordinance, it's very it's liberal in the sense It's five cans. It's five cans. Yeah. Five, five, it's five, not ten. Five cans. I've been holding them back. Five cans. People are going to ask, OK, what are we doing these big cans? Well, I think that that's what Belmar was trying to tell us, that we need to educate everybody and say, you can put five cans out there. You can put your couches out there. You can do your electronics. You can call. I think that was the mistake they made. They didn't, they didn't explain it. Maybe, this maybe at the National Night Out Green Fair, we'll have some information. Can I can I say one other thing about National Night Out? <laughs> the dunk tank has been ordered. All right. Yeah. 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 We're gonna have a security guard for the light. You're gonna make noise for the light. She might be there for two and a half hours. Yeah. 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 So everybody knows the National Night Out, which is our big night that our police department loves holding. The mayor and I will be available to be dunked for. The night, so it'll be a line from Harry Williams to probably Wendy's and Belmont, yes. yes. all for charity. Yes. Is it just employees only? Is that line No, it'll be all the residents. Oh my God! Did you get a free But I, I think the idea that I think that what you're trying to get at is, uh, you're right. Maybe there has to be some consideration. The borough has to try to do to help people who spend the money on them. I, I don't know exactly. I mean, you know, I don't know if we. Can Pay for their cans, but is there something we could possibly you could direct, do? You could direct them to the uh, Green Team website, and then we can have how to turn it into. We can have the directions on how to. But if there's it. some process, I, I think what Craig's trying to say is, what can we do with these cans? Yeah, you know, what's going to happen? So they don't end up in. <laughs> no offense. Oh well, you, you're supposed to cut it up and throw the trash. That's how you're supposed to do it. Well, anyway, those big cans. Yeah, why not try to do something? Put a sign on it that says, "This is trash. Please yeah. take." The, the big cans, like we have to the Democrat Club. What we're not going to be able to use those anymore, so we're going to throw. I think they're too big. Yeah, they're too big. So we're going to cut the, the trash. It's a mess in there anyway. Don't. But uh, now we're going to get rid of them. What do we do with them? We just throw them out to the curb. Sign curbs will buy those. Too. 
Yeah, don't they? Don't they? I don't they, they, have, don't they make good storage yeah. cans for stuff you want to flower? But I, I think the point is, is that what do all the people? Flower pot. Something. Something. <laughs> maybe we can take them at the barrel home for the public. Maybe public purposes. Yeah. Yeah. For people who don't want to purchase them, maybe that's a service we do offer for free. How we bring that's them to the cans yeah. out? We at least take them, bring them back to the facility, and then figure something out. Maybe we can make a deal with the butcher and the poster tapestry mm -hmm. or something. You can read so you can have a workshop, a composting workshop, or something. Well, we have room down there to store some cans. It's an option. It's a good option. Yeah, it's a, okay. Was well, there anything else, Beth, that you're learning? Yeah. Trish, you're not allowed to speak. You know, state normal. You have to be elected to speak. You have to speak. Well, you need my example, Rich. We're going to start with Mr. Basher because I know you have a report. Sorry, Mr. Basher. It's brand new. Thank you. All right, Mark. Well, before I start, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Because you put me on the spot with that conversation. Apologize. I um, you should have been The little yeah. ones on Sunset and Sunnybrook only handle about 12 houses. So they're small and they're about 200,000. From what I understand, Pump Station A is more comfortable with what we're going to be doing on Evergreen, and that's close to $500,000. Because it, it's bigger <sighs> pumps. And it, it, so I just want to put that out. We will we'll put together a full proposal outlining our anticipated costs wow. for the construction and engineering. And we'll put so maybe you guys need to reevaluate. I guess I'm not going to get my ambulance. Oh, you better start. <laughs> so, remember when I told you that I don't bring up anymore? I told you I'm out of bed. Shut your face. Well, why don't we? Uh, well, I'll put together a proposal and I'll present it. And why don't we look at the option you can look at? We're not going to be able to do all these things. We can't do matter hours, uh, forest, you know, uh, rugs, painting, roofs, vehicles. It's not an endless supply of money. Scout them. Yeah, you know. Um, and you know, I hate to say a band aid, but you know, right now, five hundred thousand is is a, is a ridiculous number. Yeah. Um, Maybe next month. Next why don't you read that? Sure you know, bring some contractors in and give you ideas. Is there something that can be, you know? Harry, put your thinking cap Do you remember when the, the CCOA fight broke behind you? Oh. Does anybody remember yeah, that? Yeah, I walked yeah. back okay. in that horrible, stinking mud. So what happened was they originally, if everyone remembers, they were going to shut the line off. The sewage was going to back out on the Crescent Avenue. Do you remember that? Yep. And then they, and we pushed back, they had, they had a public hearing, and everyone pushed back yep. on it. And then they, they realized they could do a bypass. Mm -hmm. And they bypassed the line, and then they cut the line, the bad part out, and things like that. So that's the only reason I'm aware of. I don't know anything about sewer lines, but Wouldn't the county you might have something? They can borrow rent? Well, I think the issue, once again, is we've got an old station. How do we how do we make it continue to make it work efficiently for as long as possible until we're ready to replace it? It's one of the last stations in the whole town that needs to be replaced, right? Forest is the last station. It's the last one. And, so you know, it's one big. It's big, but it but it's it's used to it's up and down depending on the high school. Yeah. So right now it's it's low as half. And then when the high school comes back, it's low as back. Yeah. So maybe this is a good opportunity for us to, you know, it's emergency repair. We're allowed to borrow money for emergency repair. And then we don't have to, then we're, not, we're not subject to all the, the rules. If you're saying it's already got one pump down, there's no way for you to get two Bobo pumps that'll last for five years instead of 50 years. I will look for Bobo pumps tomorrow. I, I like the idea, personally, I like the idea of digging a hole. Well, we can dig a hole from and, and, and have, and have uh, Garrison come in put a put a uh, put, put a valve because it's going to be under pressure. So we could do we could do a uh, line in place, stop it, put a valve in it that way, and tie into it, and bypass all. The bypass. Pump. Remember what they're doing with the truck? They're just sticking a pipe in there like a sump pump, pumping all the sewage to a manhole. They're just getting it higher than the hill. Correct. You have to go above the hill. If the pipes are fine, it's just the pump and the bottom's going bad. You just need to grab the water, the sewage at the bottom of that right. that tank, and, and put it right in the exact line. It's not like your lines broken. When we did bypass before, it was because the lines were broken, or the or the the road, the the road, the manhole problem. Just on that one, we could do the plumbing too. We could look at it that way. Yeah. 
and, and if you could do the plumbing outside of the scope of the of the, the well, maybe it stays there when the new well goes in. And you've got this this backup. So that. how much would that cost? Hell, it is a crazy world right now. You got a crystal ball? You have the winning lottery. We don't even know if it'll work. Well, there has to be. It's cheaper than five hundred thousand. Yeah, but like in the in the range, like in the range of a hundred thousand. No, no, no. We're talking about digging a hole and putting a bypass might be ten thousand dollars compared to putting a forty thousand dollars pump in. Yeah. Remember, his pumps work. I know. But his fear is that if it stops working, we're, we're in what do you do? So this bypass might work, Harry. If the line goes in, we're not, Elder. We're not committing to any price right now. We're not committing to any price here right now. We have to see what's going to happen first. We're not going to hamstring ourselves and have one price. We can't say that right now. It doesn't matter. We, we, we have to look at. I work with Harry on that. What do you think about? Well, it's worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth a shot. So the second pump is definitely is dead. Is it out of the? Is it it's, pulled it's, out of the well? It's, it's, it's ninety five percent dead. It's still there. It's worst case scenario. We don't know if it's going to work for. So it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work no, whatsoever. So if everyone knows, there's two pumps. One pump goes on, it goes off. Second pump goes on, then it goes oh. off. First pump goes back on. That's what happened down in Crescent, down by the. the Public works when one pump went up, right? Or the breakers went up. What happened? Yeah, no. CCMUS is different now. Yeah. Their entire electrical system fried. Yeah. One pump, both pumps. Pump, one, pump, one pump was out. Yeah. The electrical fried on one, and the pump fried on the third. And we saw what happened there. That was crazy, but. Okay. Now, imagine if they had a bypass valve, though. they could have continued to pump, which is what I'm suggesting. They could just send them back in the same pipe. Well, we can do what they did in this, buddy. Go down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they could pump thirty million. Thanks for your uh, thanks for the curveball. Well, I just wanted. I thought you were being pretty cheap. Yeah, so did I. That's why I did. Yeah. Again, I was on the spot. And I just reacted. So normally you don't give answers. I know. Well, I tried, but the I more I thought about it. Thanks, Elvin. Yeah. I'm always pushing. So I'll work with Harry on that. We'll come over the game plan on how we can. Right, so we're not doing this okay. resolution. Getting back to my Rick report that I emailed to everybody and gave a hard copy. Um, we were taking bids this Friday for Shut our DOT. Sorry. Right. It's okay. Um, that's okay. We're taking bids this Friday for the DOT project on Manor Court and Bowers Avenue, and we're also taking bids for the Forest Avenue project. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to award both those contracts next Tuesday, assuming we get competitive bids and that uh, Shelly is able to certify availability of funds. And since Monday is a holiday, you'll be working extra. Excuse me, do time. you know how many contractors have? Uh, a lot. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. If everyone recalls the uh, manholes, we got one. Right. So wow. a lot of yeah, better. we got that's at least great. at it's least not definitive, at one. least six have picked up. Three six. Four. Wow. Okay. That's uh, whether it's in or not, we don't know. Uh, under general engineering, the municipal aid applications are due uh, this Friday, so we're working on that. Uh, working with the engineering committee, we're submitting for Forest Avenue Phase Two, Payne Avenue, and the Harding Avenue. Uh, there's going to be a resolution on Tuesday's agenda because we have to submit supporting resolutions by July 31st. But the application is actually due this Friday, so we're actively working on that. I met with the open space committee at our VFW Park on June 2nd. Just to go over our application, as you may recall, we submitted an application for the borough, and BFW also submitted. They only take one application, it turned out, for each site. So they're going to be looking at our application instead of the BFW. Um, so unfortunately, that didn't work out, but we're hoping to get the twenty-five thousand. But you felt very comfortable. Oh yeah. <coughs> they, 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 they like the application. Gonna, yes. Okay. Um, so South Jersey gas pipe path easement. The, um, everything was worked out with the road opening, so they are actively out there and we're inspecting their road openings. Forest Avenue pump station, we're now, we'll work with Harry on that now instead of uh, see what we can do with that. Um, CDBG, you got that application? 
or West First, Second. That was last. Was that last month? Yes, that? that was a while ago. Oh, we did that. Was a while ago. Yeah, we haven't heard anything on those. Um, the project out on Second Avenue. I think they're out there this past week doing punch list work. So hopefully we'll be able to close that project out with both uh, DOT and CDBG. Sewer so extension on Davis Road. We're recording everything through DEP. Uh, I gotta get minutes from Joyce from our public meeting. Were those minutes they're approved? All the they're all approved. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we have to wait for you to approve the minutes, and then once those minutes are approved, we'll submit them to DEP for that uh, the public meeting we had. And I think that is everything that's been updated since the last meeting. Unless anybody has any questions on anything. Yes, Bob. You said Mitchell Avenue. No, I said Harding. Yeah, but it was Harding and Mitchell. Well, that, that whole, no, that whole Harding Mitchell, from yeah. Schubert going around the okay, corner and just taking up the intersection. Right. So. Well, we can only list we can only list three roads. Oh, I see what you're saying. So it's we'll be going to Harding and the intersection. This is the DOT. The DOT, yeah. 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 So that application is going to be plenty of roads. And we'll let you know how busy you and get a recommendation in on Friday. Okay. Do you want me to uh, finish the business and open it up to the public, or do we have anything else before well, we do that? I just want to ask you about the bridges. I oh. see that you did have a comment about the bridges. I'm waiting on a. We're, we're having a problem getting these things designed to meet the, the, the maximum depth we can have them. Um, I'm still waiting on one number. You're looking at is it an eight feet or six feet? I don't I, I moved the information forward. Russ is in the audience there. He has something to say a little bit later. I believe that there's the, the pictures of drawing that bridge you looked at. I believe that putting that one on the side and moving to another one for some reason. I'm not certain of that. But it can be clarified. But I thought the boardwalk, there's no way to get this boardwalk done. Can we use steel instead of wood to, to span that? You know, or do you still think the elevation is the problem? No, we have to to get the permit by rule. We have to be less than five. Uh, I forget the exact number. Yeah. Five and a half inches in height. Can you use steel to span that? Because that was so the it's issue. Going, it's going to be hard getting steel down there. Okay. I start. Um, but you still have we still have a height limitation. Like so even if you have a four inch piece, even if you have a four inch piece of steel, now you have to figure a way to attach. You have to figure a way to attach timber to the steel and not exceed four and a half or five inches. So we're looking into it. I'm just waiting on one number. So I want to get permit. Well, we have to go through the whole process. Well, then why don't we ask for everything at once? You know, we ask for the big bridges, ask for everything, get approval for everything. That's one that's. You know? Why are we moving so slow? I don't know. Is there a reason? Because we, we, I mean, I have to get a permit. I we can do it. We can do it without getting a permit. But then we've broken the rules. And keep me out of it. As long as you're selling one. And I'm not a big, you know, I, I, I'm torn. You know, what do you do? If we if we do something and something this, happens, this was such a we wonderful know, project. It is. I, I because like we're in the wetlands, you have to adhere to the DEP rules. I understand right. that. But and we were adhering to DEP rules, what, a few months back? Yeah. So We're trying to get you know, something designed that meets that permit by rule. When are we getting together to design it? Are you we're designing working, on, working it. on it? It's, I'm waiting on it. With the boardwalk, I don't know if there's a six foot span or an eight foot span. There's some the sketch I got. The sketch I got had six foot spaces, but it didn't add up to 42 feet or something like that. So I was just asking what we're designing to. I think some of the and questions foot, and answers will be answered when we open up the public. Okay. So we're trying. I'd rather to, those kind of things be done in committee and not during the whole time. I mean, I think that. I mean, if you want to get stuff done. Caucus and council meetings will get stuff done. If you want to discuss stuff, hiring, fixing things, all that kind of stuff can all be done before we show up here. Yeah. You know, because we've if you been want to working go, on this a long time. <coughs> Russ, Russ, John, I mean, I'm okay with it. But, but once again, you saying, want to get something done. Yeah. Get it done outside when you, you have no You know why I didn't bring it up? I don't know, you know why I didn't bring it up? I don't have enough information or facts or up to date information to really talk about it and waste time. Yeah. Russ has some information, I'm sure. When it's open to the public, he may speak, he may not. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if he's here for other reasons. I recommend that anything that's very specific should be done after the meeting 
either as a committee that can get it done and, and figure it all out and, and move forward. Just like we push things back on Harry, we push things back on the chief. I think that's the way, and then a plan is, 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 a tr is addressed to us, and all, we, all we're here to do is <coughs> So you're saying we're not here to discuss it. No, we just I want know, to approve it. But but engineering is working on it, and they're not moving as quickly asked, as we would like. I asked a month ago what the spacing were that we're supposed to design to, and I didn't get an answer yet. Oh. So okay. once I get that answer, then we can start Mark trying to design. Like, I don't like. People. And who's who's supposed to get you that? I answer? just I asked John what to clarify uh, the. I sent out an email, and I didn't get a response. That's something I think that. Someone might have said we're not doing that walk, let's do something else, but there's something else it was never specific. I didn't get an email. The money's sitting there, there's 25,000. It's in there, we got to use we it, do it this we year. Get, we don't have to use it this year, it's just, it's what, harder what? to get other money when we don't Unless spend we don't, the money yeah, okay. that we're not spending. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to open up to the public and then we can continue our conversation. Can I, can I do this? Oh, I asked that. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry. Okay, so I just have a couple of things to say. I'm going to be very calm about this. If not, you can get out the stick. Just so I know, it, it's not twenty-five thousand; it's seven thousand. Okay, the grant was for twenty-five. Right. It was mm -hmm. broken up into different elements. Exactly. So all of uh, Mrs. Kelly, and what I'm saying is, is there's money that has to be spent. Have we spent any of the twenty-five thousand? No. Okay. As for which part is the bridge, which part is sides, which part is trash receptacles, which Wait, part is cleaning? You're right. We have to follow the guidelines that we're getting. That's, my question was: We can't use the whole 25 just to get what we need done. The way the application was uh, uh, awarded, it broke things down. Oh. They don't have it memorized. memorized. Yeah. I think Shelly has is the closest one that knows that it was broken down into four or five elements. Does everybody understand what I just said? Yes. 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 Yes.
what were they eating? Did, did they light a fire? Did they have, did they have grill? Um, it bothered me because, not, not the noise for me, but because nobody's taken into consideration our wildlife that is down there. I was really angry. But the next day I went down there and there's a porta potty in the middle, I'll call it in the middle of the woods, there's a porta potty. And there was trash all over. I took pictures of it and sent it to Harry. And it creates a stormwater issue. And it puts stress on our public works. And that's unfair. Um, I have some notes here, so excuse me, because I just was writing so, so many notes. And I think, feel that we need to respect our nature. And, and why were they allowed to be there? That was my question, okay? Um, we need designated areas. My thought is that we need a designated area for something like this. They used to be at Green Acres. And to me, this is not a designated area. If you go into any, any, any woods, if you go into any park, Washington Township, Cooper River, there's designated areas for picnics, there's designated areas for what you want to do. This is not big enough to have remote controls running all through our trails. There's a bridge that they built. I see a bridge here. They put a bridge here. There's a bridge. There's signs. Uh, there's multiple tents. Uh, you know, drinks, drinks galore. And like I said, there was trash all over. I feel that you know, we need structure and organization in our town, and everything we do is for the people in our town. I knew nothing about this, and I don't think council knew anything about this, and it's not fair that I see things either on Facebook or that no one comes to us and says, hey, this is what we want to do, this is what we need to do, this is what we like to do. We're here to listen to you, all right? I feel that you need permits, you need ins they needed permits, they needed insurances, you know, no liquor allowed. <laughs> No littering, and if you litter, you take your litter with you. You take your trash with you. And things need to be reviewed and okay with the fire, with the police, with our public works. And I think that we need to figure this out. Where is a designated area for this RC club or for any other club that wants to come to our town? They don't live in Rome. They come from out of state. Maybe they live in New Jersey. I don't even know where they come from. But. I, you know, we're, we are allowing strangers, and I know that you like people to come to our town, but we're allowing strangers to come to our town with their own agenda, using our resources. You know, our taxpayers are paying for, they want, they want porta potties? Our taxpayers, that's our tax dollars. If you are, if you are an organization, you want a porta potty, then you pay for your porta potty, you get it in there, you get it out, but you need to know where it's going to go. I am asking council, and I'm asking the police to go down where that porta potty is and please remove it or take the door off of it. That door locks and it is in the middle of the woods. And I feel it is unsafe for any child walking down. Is it, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop you. Is that porta potty still there? It is there. It's staying there? I was directed to have it stay there until the end of the Well, I'll tell the you. The entire time? It's gonna be there for weekends. Okay. Well, I didn't know this, that. this is a letter from the gentleman who has who is in charge of the the uh, in, of this uh, uh, club. All right. So he's asking that we supply porta potties, that we supply re trash can receptacles. Well, gee, somebody ought to tell him that you know take your trash with you. We have we have ordinances for littering. We have ordinances for noise for animals. Can I, can I, I know you, so. I'm on a roll. You're on a roll, but I got to, because now you're going on, if you read the email that I forwarded you, mm -hmm. I personally forwarded you. So I, I read it. it I what did happened, read it. to explain everyone what happened, very briefly, this request was sent to me on May 12th. I forwarded an email to Mr. Wozong saying, let's discuss. It did not make the agenda. It got missed. And it didn't get on the agenda. Harry hasn't been to most of the council or the caucus meetings because he's been taking classes. I totally forgot about it. I'll be honest with you, I forgot about it. Then I think the gentleman reached out to Mr. Robinstein. And at the time, I said, and you know how I feel, you're right. I, I like things happening in this town, I like this. 
but I agree with you that there's a process. And we didn't go, I, we didn't go through the process. I'm agreeing, so here's what I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing that there, there should be a designated area. I agree. I agree that there should be a permit insurance. You're 100% right. This wasn't just a family going down. It was a, a much larger thing. And you're probably correct that the spot of pot was a little bit above and beyond what we're doing. I, though, and I'm trying always to promote this community. I know you are. But I understand that there's balance between everything. And you're right. Said, God forbid something had happened, and we would be liable and things like that. So the gentleman wants to come back on July 17th. Mm -hmm. Council has the right. We'll let everybody know in the audience. Council has the right to say no. No one is allowed to do activities on public property and some activities on personal property that are not sanctioned by the governing body. So, while the porta potty's down there, maybe I was ignorant because I thought the porta potty was there for the day and then left and came back. I, I'm sorry I misunderstood that, and I'm sorry that we didn't get together to go over it. I agree that these gentlemen have annex this area of our community without really our approval. Mm -hmm. But I'm torn between trying to be supportive of volunteer groups, supportive of action. I, you know, I know we all have different opinions, but I always say to everyone, the residents who live there are the most important to me because we're impeding on, on them if anything happens back there. So, Ms. Pent Ms. Ms. Pent Ms. Pent oh, so I'm used to so, support Joyce Young, actually. That's a, I'm so that's used to, that's a Freudian slap. That's a Freudian slap. I know, it's so, to me all the time. Ms. Pinto and, and Ms. Uh, Passio uh, have a vowel point. Now, one thing you did say was, it's a little area. It is. And I agree it's a little area. So, council, you have an opinion. Everyone here has their, their, their opinions and they're all loud. So you've heard very passionately what Ms. Ms. Passio has said. I would say that she's correct, that we have forced people in the past to get insurance when they have it. It's not fair to overlook someone, and you're 100% right. We force other people to do things and follow the rules. So yes, it is a park in our town, it is a park in our town, and we want people to utilize it, but I agree with you that tents do require, but they have to be over a certain size, and then they're required to have a fire extinguisher and things like that. So I don't believe any of the tents were that far. But I agree with you that the police department should have been notified, and that. There is a checklist that I believe the police department it's an created. It's activity sheet. I think the police department created it yes. so that the departments would all know the activities that are going on. Ms. Pinto is diligent about the uh, insurance to protect the borough and uh, the trash issue. I agree. If they left the property in a, in a poor condition, mm -hmm. I'm done with it. I have no problem pulling everything out of there. I have no problem with if council wants and asks me, I will make sure that that activity does not happen, that all that stuff will be torn out and removed. However, I would say we should talk and say, I think it is, it's not a terrible thing that they're doing. If you walk at that bridge that you're showing me to scale, it's about three feet. Your picture makes it look like it's 27 feet, but it's only a three foot little. I'm, I'm, little sure, I'm, I'm sure it is, but this is what. But I agree that they've been allowed in. to do whatever they feel like down we've, there. We've we've um, neglected our responsibility. This action plan was so important to our wildlife, and John and Rochelle took a lot of time preparing this. We did a resolution on it for sustainability. I, I and and it and our our wildlife out there, it's beautiful. Can you know it? You know the deer that's out there. Well, it's not in general. Let's know. start with the council, and we'll open up okay. the I would like to say, no, and I appreciate your, your your opinion, and I agree with a lot of it. But I believe that you know um, we're supposed to live in harmony with uh, my personal opinion. In harmony, human beings as well as animals. People have hobbies. I think that these folks have been there for years. Years, decades. They haven't been there. They they use green acres, and I'm not opposed to but that. They should I'm follow, opposed to. They should follow the checklist. I'm a, and they should follow the rules. I'm opposed that we don't have that. Okay. That we don't but have. But it's that. exciting to see people get together and and uh, and have a good time in our community. We just got to make sure that uh, all our eyes are dotted and our T's are crossed. And a lot of what you said is accurate. But I don't think we need to go in there with a wrecking ball. I think we just tell them you didn't do a good job. Just giving you the options. Next time, you, we're going to give you a bill. If you don't clean up properly, you're going to get a bill. So uh, things could. Well, you have to cite. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. But I think we can approach it from the angle of we, we're looking for a success of 
any group that's not farming and they're bringing you know the spotlight on our community for sometimes just fun reasons so well, i agree the designated area we probably shouldn't allow them to expand past where they're at. Let me ask you Maybe we need to at least let agree me, that where me, they're at and where the activities at. We need to have designated area for everything and anything. If food trucks want to come into our town, we can't allow food trucks to be all over rugby. No, they are regulated. We need, yes. We, right, they're very, very regulated. But we need to have designated areas. In every town, there are designated areas for these You're 100% right. What's wonderful that's going on in our community, community is people are interested in coming here and doing stuff. That's the wonderful part. That is wonderful. The negative part is we're having a hard time catching up with all the things that are happening so fast. Mr. Farrell and wants me to bring up something else, it. and I want to bring it up also, because Ms. Passio brings up what our issue is. We're part-time employees. We're not always engaged in all the activities. You know, if everyone remembers, banners were put up on town. They're wonderful banners of uh, veterans. The problem is the process wasn't followed. And it, it, I don't believe we would have said no. I really yes. don't. I think that we would have just worked I like my husband's picture up. I understand. So, and I think there's other groups that want to be represented. That's not my face, by the way. I know. It looks good, though. Yes. It looks like you. It does look it like you. Looks like it looks like you. Like really. But the point is, is that these are all wonderful ideas, and I agree that we need to balance we all just these wonderful ideas so that we, that we, you're right. we support everybody and we don't cause any problems. The key is consistency. Yes. Yeah. So, why don't we start with the first one? Does council, how's council's action? They want to come back on July 17th. I personally don't think that Spot and Pot should stay down there for the entire time. Unless I'm wrong. I would like, them, I would like that moved out of that area. They can walk. Why can't you put it closer to like maybe uh, closer to Well, I believe what happened is when they put it, put it down there originally, a neighbor called up and went bananas because it was at the end of the street. Does anybody remember that? That was artist in the That was probably oh, me. <laughs> to the lake area because there was homeless people <coughs> there. So so now they have a porta potty? That's nice for the homeless people. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what they have done to our I I know you know what they've done to the porta potties that are by the RYAA at times. Maintenance is difficult. But Maybe. there's a locked door on there. My, the only thing is I'd safe. rather I'd rather do stuff and make mistakes than not do anything. Why well, want to make a mistake when somebody gets stuck in there? I understand, but I mean, I'd rather make a mistake and then work it out. So let's start with the 17th. I have a majority of council here. Does it, I, do we go? I, I'm going to make a recommendation to everyone that we notify this this uh, organization that they need to prove us that they have a, that they're a legitimate organization, they have insurance, and but what, we don't really have a process for a permit right now. We don't have anything well, that says they I, need to get a permit. Well, I'll tell you. How do you know that they're not cooking down there? They have this big. Well, I think maybe we can give a set of rules. Yes, they do, and and I know you've got to go through Scott Hill. Yes, and we need to fill it. Huh? Did you just ask me a question? Okay. So that. Well, why don't we, do why don't we reach out? Who would like to reach out? You want me you to want do me it? To reach out? Why don't Joyce? Oh, Joyce, 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 Joyce is a great representative of the borough. She will speak very bluntly. Okay, so we want to know they they can't cook down there without permits. No, no, no. Can they cook there at all? Is it too too many trees? No, there's right? trees everywhere. You can't go. There's you can ask Mr. Hill. Yeah, he yeah, he'll know. He would be the one. He'll know. And they need insurance. They need insurance. 
And what about the trash? They have to make um, they, they have trash. Take their trash. Take their own trash. They can trash yeah. bags. Harry, and it, 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 it's not posted and bag in it. No, but I think what you said was the animals. But the animals get into yeah. it. They left the box open. It's a lot of stuff. I would, I would, I sent you the pictures. I was down there Sunday. It was the first time I ever went down there. I was shocked at the size of it. You know that they were yeah, across the street. Yeah, seven hundred people is what it says. You know, yeah, it's fine, Joyce. The town's pretty big. I'm not worried about seventy people. But uh, but it was a big event. Yeah, I did. I did say I walked around with them, and I, you know, I told them I said let's make sure you know our trash. We don't have enough trash here. And they said, oh yes, we bring it in, we bring it out. That didn't happen, right? So remind them, Joyce, politely, Joyce, uh, like an official, uh, a public official would, that they need to take their trash with them when they leave, and they need to have their insurance. Is everybody okay with just that? And what about where they where they locate the tents? Yeah. I mean, that was an issue to you. Yeah. That they were. Do we? Does anybody understand what she was saying? It, the tent location. It's, it's right in was, the. It's right in the woods. Should they be more on the field there? Why can't they be in the gravel? They yeah. are. It is on the park. park. No, it's, it's, on, park. it's in the cul-de-sac where you had yeah. where your table yeah. was. But there's a lot of tents. There's a lot of activity That's right really in there in a little small area. So why can't you just? Oh, why don't we put it down the softball field? I, I don't yeah. care what we, Patty. I, I just, why do you think the tents were located where they were? Uh, Patty, I, I think that's where the congregation of people problem, were hanging out watching. Problem, problem. They parked in the gravel area, and the tents were there. The, the smaller set of rules. They give them the trash, you know, and insurance. no flyers, insurance, and start the bear and, and, and see if they can... Well, July 17th, I apologize again, I won't be here, but I invite everyone from council to go down there and introduce yourselves. I've been there. I've been there. I, 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 I think, think it's good for you to pay for it. Well, that's up to council. I think it's cool. What? You think the porta body should be allowed to be there for this event? No. No, no. Why don't they put it up by the ground? <coughs> no, no. The question is, should we pay for it? No. No. Absolutely John? not. It's taxpayers' what? dollars. Or pay for it. Pay for what? Porta -potty. A porta potty. No. no. And we should tell them they have to bring their own. We should own one. We should own one. So remove the porta potty. We own one. No. Own one. Listen. I guess Shelly just, Shelly just no. said that we you pay for it for other organizations, and we have. I asked Harry if he had a porta potty, but we're going to have it at another event. We do not have one. Correct. But why do we have one now? I don't understand. Why, why do we have one now? Who, who, who? Yeah, for many occasions, we've rented it. Why did we rent it? We rented it to support the organization. To what support organization? The remote control car. Why would we do that? Who why would we do it for the arts? And the, why would we do it for arts and the... Uh, that's my big That's my big Why would we do it for the girls' softball? Why would we do it for anybody? We didn't do it for anybody. We are trying to be nice. It's a Runnymede remote control car. You're not Runnymede. I think it's the... Isn't it the Runnymede? It's in Runnymede. It's, yeah, it's like St. Teresa's. Excuse me. St. Teresa's is a, 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 a religious organization. We allow them to use our gym. And we, we, we're we bend over backwards for any organization in, in our community, guys. We have a history of doing this for St. Teresa's, for the Women's Club, for the Rotary Club. I, I, I understand rules. I agree. But let's decide what, how far we go. With we should have a policy where they have to, when they have an event, they could request, maybe on the sheet we develop as we're moving forward, they could request a port about it. I think and that's fee. Just to cover yeah, our, our cost. And we'd be happy to, happy to help these organizations. But I don't think we should be paying well, for it. I'll tell you, I've tried to do fees and, and, re, and, and ask for fees for other things. And the pushback that I get for fees is unbelievable. Is that the community we want to be? Listen, the green is that the community we want to be? Green Magic Run Fees, PAR, the green fee if they wanted to. Then we can always help pay the fee, but if it's a fee and that has to be paid, we subsidize the animals in town. Pay. We subsidize the TNR. We subsidize things all the time. But once again, it's your decision. I'm only giving you options, but you need to be a majority vote. So, first, are we providing a port of body? I heard no, 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 no. Let's say so choice. Yeah. Let them. You know, here's what you say, choice. You're allowed to bring a porta potty. We must have it brought in and removed within the next day. Or if we the trash needs to come in and the trash needs to be removed before you leave, I think we should request a security deposit. The borough does have an ordinance for the Harry Williams building, but once again, you start getting owners. I think people in this audience are going to get mad when we sit there and say it says a $500 security deposit. You want? To, I, I'm fine with rules, guys, 
But it's you got to sometimes really stop need people that. from doing it. We really need that. I'm, I'm with you, Bob. Listen, if I had a little boy and I could take him down there and use that little track, I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. But if you had a little boy and you wanted to walk with him down the track, you know. and they were down there with their third remote you know. controls all over the place. They were only there once a week. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. We still have wildlife now. How about, okay, so once a week, let's put them down on your corner. It's fine. Is your point that there's too many people? You want people to walk through the town, right? You want them to walk through the park. You know what? I, I consider that area sacred, all right? It's full of it's full of wildlife. It's also a park. That. It is a park. It is a park. Why are we putting bridges? You can call it a why is, park. Why are we putting bridges on? It's not. Why are we putting bridges on? So you can get from one end of the woods. If we want it to be nature, why are we putting the bridges on? Why are we allowing past the so we that you can enjoy. Did you ever really go down? I, I'm Wait, did you ever really just go down there and and look at look up at the trees and watch what watch what nature is? I, all I spent a lot of time down. <laughs> yes, I, I carried this pallet. Yes, across. that's what you did. Did you I really walked never in to see what nice everyone else is down doing. there? You really never took a nice walk down. I've taken walks through it. I bought duck boots. You know what? All I am is a, no, no, no. I am a nagging wife. Totally. You are, and there's nothing wrong. With, you're pointing out you're right. They should have taken their trash out. Yep. They should have provided insurance because we made other people do it. Yes, you're right. 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 Yes. Where I think the, the, the question is, is where do we draw the line? You get a designated area. You get a designated area for this. I, oh, so Joyce, do the trash. Do the let you know and say. You didn't take it. They're cooking. More than happy to take They it. have to supply insurance. Naming the borrower as additional insurance. Absolutely. And they no have, liquor. Absolutely. They have they no liquor. liquor. Did they have liquor? I don't know. They had huge. And huge, the place the farm is, you're going to go down there on those days. And if they're doing anything wrong, you throw them out. Uh, trash has to be, whatever they produce, no. they have to take out. <clears throat> and the tents. What about the tents? Just a rest. Patty <laughs> I'll pay a visit. What about the tents? Oh, no. Tents are allowed under a certain size, right? Is yeah, there, I don't know what the size is. Only those There's right. a certain size. Somebody's told me that you can't have tents. It has to be like under 150 square feet. Well, who determines that? Scott. Scott does it because if you cook in a tent, there's no more. We're taking hours out, they're going to bring their own. Yeah, so you're going to get it pulled out. Why don't you watch out? You're going to get the porta potty. I'm going to let them know. Says right there, July 17th. July 17th. And then they want the 28th and September 18th. Yeah. Now, our, our, what goes on? Let's, let's get through July 1st. Yes. Yeah. I think sometimes we put the car a little too far. I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you are. Email that right. I, I was. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yes. yeah. I'm just saying I think that's the right way. So, what happened is to everyone in the audience also, they called me instead of the bar. And I did not bring it to council. Mm -hmm. The clerk is the custodian of records. The clerk is the full-time employee. The chief of police is a full-time employee. I did not bring it to council because I wanted to talk to Harry about it beforehand. And it got dropped. Can we censor you? Or you can censor me. <laughs> you can send me away for a month. The doctor. Starting and tomorrow. And we're doing We're out of you. You know, hey, you guys know how I feel about this job. I love this job, but it's a very tough job. It's it is. annoying as hell. Blame the mayor for everything. All right, we're going to go open the public there. We are, before we do, I, I did miss, miss, thank God Miss Kelly saw what I left here. What is that? So I had the firehouse plans. Yay! I need to clap. <laughs> yes, we so, do. Is there an ambulance? I've been waiting for two years. Is there an ambulance? But I'd like everyone from council to do two after the meeting. Years. And I'd like our um, engineer has a copy for him just to take a peruse. These are not final drawings. They're going to the, the construction office. These are preliminary. These are preliminary. preliminary. The idea is that council just to give you a layout. Council is going to. Are they going to be in the barrel office? They're going to be in the construction office. And they're going to review them. Mr. Hill's going to review them. Mr. Kearney's going to review them. Mr. Woody from construction going to review them. And, and then we're going to make any notes. And this is preliminary to go back, and then it's going to get done. We'll have final. Council is not going to reimburse for the final draft. We, we just said we would pay for these drawings because it benefits the paid staff. It, it makes ADA requirements. It does the fire protection. But we want to make sure we're not doing it twice. So we're going to just review it. Everyone can look at it. Uh, and that's that's that. So there's a little bit of progress. Great. Um, 
Was there anything else before we open the cup? I think that was it. Uh, the bill, payment of bills. <laughs> All right, payment of bills. Is there a motion to pay the monthly bill? I make a motion to pay the monthly bill. I'll second that motion. Motion by Ms. Tassia, second by Ms. Kelly. Roll call, please. Mr. Tassia. Yes. Mr. Ramirez. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. And Mr. Sapiro. Yes. The monthly bills are paid. Going well. This portion of the meeting is open to the public. Any wish to speak on the microphone? State your name and address. Uh, I'm just going to read a, a statement. Lee, can you uh, state your name and address? Sure. Yes. <clears throat> My name is Kenneth Lee. I live at 12 Washington Avenue in Rome. I have a degree in fine art. I have participated in the arena of creating public art for more than 35 years. I serve on the Camden County Cultural and Heritage Commission. I was initially appointed by Assemblyman Bill Mullen. I am the president of the community arts nonprofit Reimagine Run. Reimagine Run Me is aware that the Run Me Town Council needs to be informed about the public projects that we undertake, which is why we have two liaisons to the town council who regularly attend our executive board meetings. Last fall, our board voted unanimously to apply for a grant to create a mural on the building which was formerly known as the School of Dance. We selected this building because we are committed to working with the town to help with the revitalization of the Black Horse Pipe business corridor. Our liaison, uh, one of our, our two liaisons if you're not aware, are Councilman Kelly and uh, Councilman Greer. Uh, Councilwoman Kelly also serves as our legal advisor. Councilwoman Kelly participated on the team that wrote the grant that we submitted to the Camden County Cultural and Heritage Commission. She also assisted in drafting the request for qualifications, which we posted to publicize this project to the arts community. Councilwoman Kelly also served as the town council representative on the search committee that reviewed and selected the muralist for the project. Um, and that process took approximately five months. We did three rounds of journey. In my experience, I am not aware of any other arts nonprofit that has taken such extraordinary measures to engage and involve their own town council. This is why it has come as such a surprise to us all that the Runnymede mayor and council suddenly perceived murals as creating a crisis, warranting the emergency introduction of a strict new mural and public art ordinance at the June 7th council meeting. Upon reviewing the proposed ordinance, we are concerned that it will be harmful to the business community and represent an unnecessary impediment to further progress um, of the revitalization that we all want to see for our town. Mayor Pattis has asked that we review the ordinance and make our recommendations before the vote at the July 5th council meeting. We reached out to several experts in the field and have received an offer from Leo Vasquez at the creative placemaking communities who is willing to take this on as a pro bono project to craft an original ordinance that balances the concerns of the town council the arts community and the business community we are simply requesting at this time that the town council allow more time to take advantage of its generous offer and finally as a representative of the Camden county cultural and heritage commission i join with my other commissioners voicing our concern that in matters of the arts, towns often, often follow each other's needs, and a poorly crafted ordinance can have ramifications that can suppress the advancement of the arts throughout the entire region of South Jersey. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Yes. Did you say Mrs. Kelly serves as your legal advisor? We ask her to do that um, for us. What, what does that entail? That entails when matters of legal things come up, and we ask us help for her opinion, because we have no lawyers that are on them. I would strongly suggest you see serving in that role as quickly as possible, because of your role on town council, the fact that, respectfully, you're not an attorney. I am more than happy to assist in that regard, but it, you, I would strongly recommend you not do that. Is your right. argument that she's acting as an attorney without That's a problem, yes. 
especially giving as a counsel legal advice and, and giving something that can be construed as legal advice when we have I don't want to call them issues but matters that come before the respective organizations that puts you in a potentially very problematic spot and that's why you have me so I'm more than happy to help with anything really and you know as the as the borough attorney so I agree. use me I agree. yeah well to <coughs> clarify we refer to Eleanor when a legal question comes up and then we take her advice if she said that she does not know the answer to that then we need to consult with her lawyer then that would be her advice us and that's the way she presses us she, 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 right? she doesn't have that title oh. i'm a trustee <coughs> you just said Eleanor, she's a legal no no counsel. she serves in that position for us because she has trustee. more expertise for that john is yes. yeah, okay. yeah. yeah she can be a trustee that's fine it's just when I hear legal advisor, that's a problem for me. So, but we can work around it. And I think everybody on this side wants what you want. We just want to make sure everything goes about it the right way. And yeah. that's the gentleman the that he's referring to is an amazing man. That's he's great. been in this field as a leader. I have met him personally. He's so what's amazing. What's his title? That's what. Yeah, his name is Leo Vasquez. What's, what's his yeah, he is the, um, he directs the uh, creative placemaking communities. He used to, formerly he was creative placemaker in New Jersey. Uh, he organizes conferences and things. He helped advise Perth Amboy on bringing their real ordinance. He is very qualified. And I would say that there's no one on our own personal board that has the qualifications no. of Leo. And amazing. that's why we reached out to him. Um, yeah. Preparing tonight, we did have, um, we have a letter of support from the Camp County Cultural Heritage Commission basically saying the same thing, please exercise caution because all of my fellow commissioners are concerned that the what towns in South Jersey yeah, what, will look at what, Okay, so explain to me what are you concerned about with the ordinance? We are concerned that you are rushing too quickly to create an ordinance without consulting the business community and the arts community. Did you I, read would, the what, I would yeah. respectfully say that the rush was imposed upon us more than anything else. And I understand that you have two liaisons from council, but as the mayor said, they're two council members. This is the governing body as a whole. So, and I made a statement at the last meeting that as a, the majority of the people up here found out what was going on with that mural, I, I think it was Sunday night. Yeah. So well, that's why we had to, in order, and look, I'll say this, with our current rules that are on the books, it was borderline and ambiguous as to what was being done was even permitted. But what we did in an afternoon was create a mechanism where we pass a resolution and a first draft of an ordinance. Otherwise, an alternative, and I'm going to be completely frank with you, was to shut down the project, which we didn't want to do. We are concerned that considering the expertise that we have that you didn't think to consult us just like you didn't think to consult us before as a group before the mural project was set i don't think you listened to what i said i listened to every word sorry. okay eleanor public kelly was your representative she's not appointed by us she's not appointed by us no i'm a volunteer yeah mr to mr Darian, the mayor does appointments yeah. and uh while i agree that she should have told us all and kept us aware, and Mr. Ranieri also. Uh, it's different than uh, an appointment where council ratifies the appointment. I guess the question is, did you have a question for Ken before you go? I just wanted to know, basically, uh, everybody felt art is good, okay? But I think we should know when, where it's going to be and when it's going to be. That's the only thing we were questioning. I agree. Other than right. that, who's going to maintain it? Here's yeah, who's going to maintain it, which right. takes exactly. me somewhere else now. Yeah, over to St. Teresa's. St. Teresa's. That needs now to be who's painted going to again. Who's that? going to paint it and who's going to pay for it? That is an issue that we brought up to um, Father. Father? Yeah, Father. So we are well, no, we to that. Have, who, that's a great question. St. Teresa's is starting to look, mm -hmm. look uh, Yeah. So. There was no plan that was, yeah. was supposed to, the barrel helped uh, fund that. There was the, a plan on that I could join. Oh, tell me. There was Danielle, uh, who was the, right. the project. Yeah, she was great. She's still there. Okay. But she made, you know, if she's involved, she's working it. 
we, we had, she, she acquired all the additional paint, she got all the colors labeled, set them in their uh, storage set, and it was a one shelf dedicated to the paints to refresh the mural when needed. And we said we'd be happy to help you reimagine Romney when you're ready to do it. So that was addressed. Right, and I specifically. So why is it still in chat? I they pulled the trigger. Well, they just got done there. Oh, the carnival. They asked yes, we'd be happy to help. Yeah. The carnival. I made specific recommendations to That's Father great. in writing that in order to maintain that property, they would have to <coughs> not salt and plow it during the winter, and also that they needed to redirect the runoff off of the roof because it was coming directly down. And I said we would be happy to help them with that. And if they did that, we would volunteer again to repaint it. But that was the um, considerations that we made. We weren't going to repaint it every year if they can continued to allow um, <coughs> conditions that would cause it to deteriorate. So we identified to them what conditions were causing the deterioration. We made our recommendations. And at that point, we can't force them to do it. We can only recommend it. This is, this is, I'm very glad you guys brought this up. Yeah. Because this is exactly, Ken, what we're trying to figure out. You set standards for the, the owner of the, the mural, and you have no mechanism, correct? correct? To make them do anything. Oh, no, no. And so what the ordinance does is the ordinance makes it very clear that the owner has a, re has a requirement to maintain it, to either hire a professional, to do it themselves and do that. So one of the concerns I think the council has, I know I have, is exactly what you're bringing, what you're bringing to light with St. Teresa's. We were all supportive of that. The council helped out fund it. And, and now I'm hearing that the church, even you gave them wonderful recommendations and they're not taking it. Now granted, it's not public art in the sense that everyone sees it, but had it been a, a, a mural that everyone could see and you go to them and say, you need to move the downspout, you need to do these kinds of things and they don't do it. I believe, Ken, we definitely need something to help either facilitate the, the repair work to it or something that just outlines, you know, what's the mechanism? You know, when people don't cut their grass, we send code enforcement out and if they don't cut the grass, public works goes and cuts the grass. You know, does council, I mean, think about what you're saying, what you've just, what you've just brought to our attention is now this person is not heeding your recommendations. So how do we how do we address that? Well, I believe that you already have ordinances that talk about people not maintaining their properties, like the properties along the Black Horse Bike, that we're seeing signs of blight developing and you're not already enforcing the ordinances. So what I am afraid of is you are going to create another ordinance in town that you will arbitrarily enforce to some people and not enforce to other people based on what the whim of the council, basically, because there are no safeguards to protect the business owners or the property owners in town from um, that happening. So that's why we are looking forward to working with a professional who can foresee these things because they have done that in other towns that's come up with. Uh, I mean, I do agree, and I also would add that before council passed that resolution uh, last month, that Mr. Cook was very, no, Mr. Cook, Mr. Bosky from Cooks, was aware that he had a responsibility. That he, you informed him ahead of time that he had a responsibility. He put that in his letter that I was told that I need to. We explained that to him. That and, we and, also and we appreciate explained, that. Yeah, that was part of the, we were very professional actually yeah. in what we do and in our requirements of what we were commissioning the artists to do. We also told them that our town currently has a thriving arts community that's trying, but in the future we can foresee that there may not be funds available to restore a mural. So we made it a requirement that they knew that ultimately the mural may have a life and then be beige over, just the way you would paint over any other building. So who enforces that agreement that you have with the, uh, the property owner? Nobody enforces it. It's basically the property owner knows when to paint their building and when not to paint their building. If it starts to look bad and public opinion says, hey Joe, your building doesn't look so good anymore, then that's up to the property owner to hear that. Town council is not telling property owners right now along the Black Horse Pipe that their properties 
are deteriorating and they need to do work to make them look better. Yeah. So why arbitrarily create a standard that targets the one force that we have been able to do in town that's actually helping to revitalize yeah. the town? I mean, I agree murals are helping to revitalize the town, but my concern, is not but, my, but my concern that I'm having already is exactly what we're afraid of is you've made someone aware that there's a, an issue and they're not taking care of it. And while I agree with you 100% that we need to have a more uh, consistent enforcement process, um, we're working on that. I, I think I said earlier, we're still trying to catch up with all these things that are happening. And I, I, I know your concerns are that we're targeting something, but the way I read the mural ordinance and what I think council is trying to do is say, we support all this, yes, we want to promote this, we're putting money in our budget for this, we're doing all these things, and all we're saying is, is that the property owner, which we have no control over, Unless we have an ordinance that says, hey, be aware that if you do this, no different than your right, cutting grass and all that, if you do this, that you, you're taking on the responsibility that you have to maintain it per the recommendations of the artist, per the recommendations of the board that's regulating it. You just said public opinion says when it needs to be redone. I would argue that, you know, there, that's a great point. When is public, who's public opinion? Mrs. Passio's public opinion? Or Mr. Ranieri's public opinion, or some other group's public opinion. So, let's. Can I ask while you stand there, Ken? Does council want to delay the second reading, or does council want to move forward and then possibly take the recommendations? I mean, it's up to once again. It's up so, to you so guys. Here's why I feel okay with that because we passed the resolution. I'm okay with that. Well, I'm, I would agree. You're okay with what? I'm okay with. Taking Post input and, and not necessarily yeah. passing the next one. And that's fine. I'm, I'm all that. for that. Let's get the. Oh, remember, that was the agreement you guys made. And if you're okay, as long as there's no more other murals going on. Well, that's right, because that would have to okay. be approved by no us. Other so, do you agree that no murals will go up until the ordinance is passed, the one that you guys want to recommend? So, what is currently. Why are murals currently prohibited? They're they not necessarily, unless when you read the, it's, it's ambiguous, the, the have the lawyer answer. At best, it's ambiguous. So what I would say is, is that there is a sign ordinance, and I understand it's not a sign. However, there is a prohibition of a product that is sold by a business being part of a painting that happens outside of the business. So when you have, it's a flower shop from what I understand that's being painted. And that's great. I think everybody supports that. But you have, and I saw that the drawing was flowers, if I recall correctly. That's borderline problematic with our ordinance. I guess the overall point is, and no, the building, the building is the former. The building is the former. That we're finished. Let's move past the next week. That's fine. Do what you have to do. I let you talk. I'm sorry. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Please finish. Thank you. So as I was saying, that from what we saw, and remember, we found out on the Monday before our Tuesday council meeting, if this was communicated better, and I'm not pointing fingers at any one individual, I understand you have two members of council who serve as liaison. All I'm saying was, I understand that you applied for the grant back, I believe it was last December. If this were more clearly communicated to the borough as a whole, these two aren't the borough as a whole. The mayor is not the borough as a whole. This entire group is the mayor and council of the borough of the, as a whole. And then these are employees of the borough, standing to my left and my right. So the point that I'm trying to make is that transparent communication, and I'm not pointing the finger at you or anybody else, is how we prevent problems like this. Because what we had to do was have something on the books through the resolution and through the process to ensure that you were allowed to start that that Saturday. If we had not done what we had done last month, then the alternative would have been that project doesn't happen. That's why we did it. Are we open to collaboration? Absolutely. Are we open to comments? I don't see anybody having a problem with that. We want to make it as good as possible. We're not, we were, I feel like we were forced to rush it based on the circumstances. And again, not blaming anybody in particular. But when you consider all of these things, that's a small musical thing. No, that's a small musical interlude. We want to help, but we want to make sure it goes both ways. So before it becomes contentious, 
Can I ask, it sounds like the whole straw poll council. Everyone seems to, I'm not speaking for anyone, Craig, is everyone okay with waiting for the recommendation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine with yes. waiting Actually. for the recommendation as long as there's no murals put. I do have a problem with that. <laughs> why do you, why why do you have a problem with putting your off? It, it, it only takes 30 days to pass an ordinance. What, what do you well, do you one of the things that's going on is that they're, um, you know, murals have a very specific season that you may be of, so there is the that. Um, we have been approached by other businesses in town that are interested in doing murals, and as we have begun to circulate the ordinance to those businesses, they're like, no way. As soon as they read what was required of them, like, absolutely not. So it's basically... Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> they're upset that we want them to pay $50. Yes. No. An application fee. Yes. No, there's and been we want there. to send a letter to their neighbors. Yes. I'm upset with exactly. Uh, please don't speak until you've been uh, in, in, in the news. If you want the other people speaking, what are they upset about? Because I'm a business owner. All right, I'm going to ask that. Yeah. No. Okay, I don't want it to get contentious, guys. Please don't go down the wrong path with this. I'm going to speak to specific points. Okay. First of all, my name is David Steinberg. I live at 825 East 23rd Road, across the 313 here in Lunaby. Um, and as far as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I, I welcome the opportunity to be able to, to work with you because because I, I, I don't think any of this I don't think any of this would have happened uh, unless there was a lack of communication because communication works both ways and if you if you feel that we didn't communicate we didn't uh, for whatever we were having. Uh, members of our, of our board when you uh, when the council or not, uh, I, I understand your concerns. And by giving us an opportunity to be able to come up with something, we, we are engaging with, uh, with Leo Basquez, as, as Ken said. And I think, I think that is something that, uh, something he wants to do because not only, not only does, does he want to do something when we have to run a meet, Serves as a model for the rest of New Jersey, which is not our concern. Yeah, yeah. it's not our concern. And Dave, the question to you, if you want to help us answer the question, is I think council is willing to take advice because we agree that we're not professionals in this and we want to be supportive. But the ordinance that we modeled had minimal stuff in it, and I'm hearing that the business owners had objections. What were their specific objections? The specific objections is, is the time period. What was the time period? Well, let me just get to a couple of things here. I've got a little bit of a list here, haven't we? Uh, after we met last week, the day after, Thursday morning, I got a call from a friend of mine, David, come over. I took him to the hospital. He's still in the hospital right now. So most of my time has been spent with that. So I've got some preliminary things. I have not had an opportunity to work everything, but I want to give you a flavor as to what the thing is so far. It makes sense. I think it's, we're better off having everything, the comments submitted in writing. Yeah, I, I, I think, think that's, that's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind me, I'm going to make a recommendation to the board to postpone the order. That's fine. But I would argue, I would say that the board should make it very clear to the audience members that no murals will go up until the ordinance is that is agreed except to for agree. except for the ones that are approved, approved by resolution or right. we will argue this if a drawing is submitted just get a resolution you are correct Dave. you are all correct had this board been given any information of the process and the and the, everything you guys did the board would have simply said yes but because it was found out on stinking Facebook it pissed everybody off and it felt like they were not made aware. Now, I took a lot of lashings to get it to get over them to, so that there wasn't a big fight, which I know would be negative for the community. I'm protecting the community all the time. There were members of this board who were going to vote for nothing to not allow them. So, all I'm asking you to do is, if you do have one, Mr. Leap, if there is one in the in the pipeline, submit it. We'll prove it at the we Tuesday don't meeting. Have anything in the pipeline and why was it such an objection to wait till the ordinance was adopted? Because the ordinance itself lacks a lot of things. We're not saying, I think here's the misunderstanding. 
We're not pat well, at this point, we are not passing the ordinance that is past first reading. We've agreed to postpone, right? right. Nobody has an issue with that. Right. Until we get until, until, until we well, get, until we get the, we'll get the recommendations, exactly right. In the meantime, here's what we're asking. Mayor, I'm gonna take it one small step further than you took it. We won't pass any murals except by resolution. So in the event that there are any other murals in the pipeline, submit them to us. And if they meet what we want to do or what looks, you know, in spirit of what this mayor and council supports, then fantastic, we'll pass a resolution just like that. That's what we're saying. What was your point? My point is, I'm good with waiting. There's nothing in that resolution that I don't feel that the ordinance and the audience and the ordinance that was harmful. I don't no. think so either. But here's what I, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I think they've asked for an opportunity no, 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 to clarify that. this yes. to go with an expert, and I think we, that's good governance sure. to consider everything, including somebody who's going no, to, we're not bound by, to be clear to everybody, we are not bound no, by any of no, 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 uh, we, we didn't head hunt, we tried to help them out. All the time. All the time. It wasn't a nasty All thing. Yeah. It, it was, was it, it, that's the steps we needed to take to be right, comfortable exactly. with allowing yeah. that to take place. Now, the only thing I will ask if anybody has this information, this is Eleanor's question. Time frame. Eleanor always wants to know when something's going to be done. Do we have any idea how long it will take to generate a draft ordinance? At this point, I'm not sure. So can you look at the question? I have to answer with that. Uh, so that's the number so one question. I heard like something about July. <laughs> from what I understand, what I understand, the process is that, that he'll be using some of his students on a pro bono basis, which we're grateful for, but we don't have the funds to be able to pay for something like this. Do the research and come up with, with, uh, with whatever the recommendations are. Okay. The only thing I, 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 so I have... Do you think in 30 days? 30 days? No, 30 days not. I feel like as long as everybody is transparent with each other, we will be fine. Yes. I okay. firmly believe okay. that. Okay. And I think we all want the same thing. Okay. I like, I'm in agreement with that as well. Right. Yeah. I, I don't like things to be perpetual, though. Okay, that's my only fear. Right. We just keep the can forever and never adopt the order. So, so Nick, you know, we can I, do that. I, I believe we, we understand what, what council wants. But, but, but remember, here, here's, here's something I want to, we're going to postpone next week's public hearing. That's fine. Oh, it's still past first reading. And as long as we advertise it, we can reschedule that at any point. Okay. We're going to give you latitude, but I guess it, the, the consensus is it's not going to be forever. Oh, and we can, sure. So that's all. Just keep, all right, us, so the just ordinance, keep us posted. Is the ordinance doesn't die until December's meeting. So that's basically, correct. at December's meeting, the ordinance dies. So if at any point we feel that the process isn't moving forward and we feel there is a need to make everybody happy, council could simply say we're going to advertise and adopt it. Once again, any ordinance can be amended. So, and I understand you want to set good precedent, but I don't think that the borough should wait forever, you know, to, to do something. That, that's a fair statement, and I fully accept that. So, you know, let me ask you a question here. Sure. Would you want us to get to the progress report? Anything. At, sure. at, meeting. at least we're keeping in, in Not the meeting. Not in the meeting. We would much rather Not have the meeting. Okay. We would rather have too much information than not enough. I'm you're talking, I can't hear you. Sorry. We'd rather have too much information than not enough. I think that's the theme of the night. And what's great about email and electronic information, or even if you drop stuff off, if someone doesn't read it, like I didn't read something tonight, it's my fault for not doing it. So everyone has their obligations to be prepared for, their, for the meetings. Okay. I, I, I look at this whole process, what is developed out of this, as a teachable moment for all of us. I think all of us have concerns, and I, I, and I agree with what uh, Councillor had said about that being open and, uh, and open with, with our, our communications. I think that's a really important thing. And uh, certainly, I'm, uh, I'm going to say right now, I'm committing myself and committing to reimagine one of me and can, can better not be able to hit when I walk out to, uh, to doing just that. Then what were you just yeah. All right. because, because, look, we, we all want the same things. Yeah. And I understand there, was, there, were, there were errors made. And we don't need to rehash that. It's just kids. Yeah. Let's let's move forward. Starting right let's now. Move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. So absolutely. we're going to pull from the Joyce pull from the uh, the ordinance uh, from the agenda. Ms. Passio, you don't have to deal with it. I'll be back for the next meetings and the following meetings. Wait, you think I couldn't deal with oh, it? Well, I know you can deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you can deal with it. You do. I can deal with it. We have a few more people on the street. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do you know, David? Uh, yes. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, David.
Thanks, it's all good. And uh, have a good time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Hey, everyone. I'm, I'm Russell Burton. I'm the interim address. Oh, actually, I live on 51 Hilltop Avenue in the Hilltop section of Foster Township. You're allowed to be here. That's quite okay. Yeah. But I am also the interim vice president of our new Rotary Chamber of Commerce. Uh, yes, okay. yes, as, yes. As well as the current president of the Rotary of Rotary Belmar Condor. But I, I came to, to speak as the, the Chamber of Commerce. I, I, I think the, the, the regulation of, of arts is unnecessary. But if you, uh, and I think a good part of it, maybe you can help us better understand how best to communicate to council so that everybody knows. Okay, an assumption was made by participation of, of two council people that all council people would be informed. And, you know, I've had several other situations where other people, particularly our equipment, the, the exercise equipment for the rotary, where I, I informed yourself as well as the councilman in November of our grant and what we were going to purchase, and February 27th, we were notified that council was never notified. So we, what is the best way for us to communicate? Can we just assume that? So, so I, I will apologize on the member of the rotary, and I thought I knew that it was happening, to you and you and but I will say that I'm a pretty simple person in the sense that I understand we, we, the Rotary was sponsoring the equipment and I knew council was aware of it. What they weren't aware of was the locations that they were being put in, who was installing it, how they were installed, when they were coming in, and all that kind of stuff. So at a <coughs> Rotary meeting that I did not attend, but it was brought up that the equipment was coming in soon and that Belmar's Public Works was offering to install it. However, if you recall, the manufacturer had no specifics on how to install it. Is that correct? Uh, actually, they, they did. But it took a while to get it, didn't it? It did. It did. It did. The locations needed to be worked out, and we walked the, you were aware, we walked we did. it. We did that. So, well, my, my, even though I, I take some responsibility that the communication wasn't great, but at the same time, you know, when you decide that you want to put exercise with it somewhere, shouldn't you know where it's going to go? Shouldn't you know how it's going to go and be installed? Shouldn't you know? What the, time, what the time frames are and things like that. So let me ask you a question. Has the exercise equipment been installed? No, it hasn't. Where is the exercise equipment? Uh, it's a supply chain issue. It's supposed to be delivered shortly. Okay. But, we, we, but you know, why, why won't we inform in December of what we needed to provide you instead of February 27th? And because uh, I, I believe, once again, I'll take some responsibility. The clerk is full time. Things get on the agenda. Okay. Things can be walked on. Things can be on there. I forget things. I'll take some. I'll take a lot of responsibility. But at the same time, I would like us to. You're right. We have to keep working on it. A lot of things are moving at the same time. Maybe you heard. We're dealing with murals. We're dealing with exercise equipment. We're dealing with all these things. It's exciting. And, and it is exciting. And we're trying to balance all this stuff. And things are getting a little bit lost in translation. I would argue that the exercise equipment still hasn't been installed. So we really weren't in bad shape because we just wanted to make sure it was being put in a way. Bad shape. That's why we need the extra time. No, no, bad shape. Thank uh, you. I try to be funny on that. So, Russ, I would say all of our emails are on there. The clerk, the best way is to get something on an agenda. We've not done, and, and because of COVID, we haven't had our committee meetings. Has anybody had a committee meeting other than Ms. Pascal? Has anybody had a committee meeting? No. So, the committees are where these things are supposed to happen. When I first got on council, committees meet, met monthly, they got together, and they went over this stuff. They showed up and they made recommendations. We need to get back to that that point so that someone can bring up a question and say, "Okay, we're getting answers to it. Where's it going?" That's all. Okay, so you remember what we did, Russ? We took pictures. We located it. I took a Saturday and no, I. No, we did. We, we did take care of it, but just that we were notified one day. Mr. Sapir, so we because once again, we only meet once a month, so the committee can meet at any time. You guys can meet with three members of this council or myself at any time. Once there's a fourth person, now we're violating a rule. It's the Open Public Meetings Act, the Sunshine Rule. So get, get together and get these things done so that a person can answer a question now. I agree. Eleanor and John, I'm going to pick on you guys. You guys talk a lot. You say a lot. But you know what they never did? They never said, and this is a problem I have, Russ, with what you just said. You said you don't like the fact 
that the council wants to regulate something. I'm well aware of the extensive vetting process that you guys did to pick these artists and to pick this process. So why did you guys have a vetting process and to determine to pick the mural, and yet the elected officials, who I agree are not as professional as you, but you agree that there is a necessity to make a determination that it's not willy-nilly. You did not expend Absolutely. those funds Absolutely. without a five-month vetting process Absolutely. to come up with the best solution and to have the audacity to say, we don't have the right to at least look at the drawing before it goes up. Well, well, really bothers me. Okay, so, no, so let's get into the specific of the, the ordinance, okay? Because it seems that there's only five million dollars in all of New Jersey who have similar ordinances to that. So what? Okay, it seems that it actually... Uh, the one that closest fits it is the borough of Westfield in Union County. Don't we talk? Okay. So, but there's there's two major differences that the business community has an issue with. Okay. That we, we hope that you can review it and at least consider these two. So, in the, in the Westfield ordinance, the council doesn't decide what is art and what should be approved. They actually have the Westfield Arts Council, and so they decide what is. Yeah, I eliminated that. Okay. Well, I, I, I think that we have a qualified organization here that, you know, has people who... Well, I understand that, and I, I, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go back and forth with your point. Okay. So, because the reason we didn't want to have that is because I think members of council feel that there's a concern when you have the, the people who want to do something as the people who approve something. So there's a little bit, while it does say in the ordinance that we take the, the opinion and the expertise of people, there's still a, a check and balance on here. You know, I'm gonna bring up the chicken people. You know, there's concern of allowing people who want to do the chickens to be in charge of the chickens. Okay, but understanding the objective of the organization, okay, to bring arts to, to better the image of running, yes. and that that's the premise they're going on, as, but being qualified artists, you know, I, I think it is. Russ, have we ever said no to anything? I know this doesn't really help. We've we never said no to anything. Imagine what we are doing. Yeah. We're, any we're, any we're, we're tabling this for a little while. Yeah. Well, and Russ, that gives you some time. With yeah, yeah, I will work with you. To work. But he was, he was saying, what's the business community you have against well, He wants to know what, what the process together is. And, and, well, and, and, well, and, and, and it encompasses yeah. all of your wants and needs and, 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 and your desires. And we look at it. Well, okay, yeah, this works. This is good. And Briefly, what, what why is the business community against it? Give me one reason. Okay, there's two things. First of all, uh, we don't want obstacles put in the way of people who really have good intentions. Of you said the business. So here's my question. Well, that, that is one of them. Okay, because there, there are, we're coming across other laws that we're questioning why you have them, and we're going to come and, and speak to you about those. But, but to put more obstacles in the, in the way of people who are intentions are good, you know, makes it demotivates people. May I ask a and question? Then, me? Is there, how are we able to tell who has good intentions and who has nefarious intentions without it? Well, we know the organization. Okay, but what I'm saying is we have to apply our rules equitably. Same okay, to so, every organization. So all that murals go through reimagine running me. Like, I would be extremely no, well. no, I have a question, no. real quick. That's it, there's a thing we're talking about. There's an arts council in Westfield, that's appointed, if I recall correctly, by the mayor and council. Right, right. That's exactly. an option. They don't outsource it to a private group. That's the difference. It, it is. It okay. is. Okay. But I didn't want to have to sit here and appoint everybody, because I'd probably appoint Ken and Dave anyway. Okay. Uh, right. Um, I probably would, but that's fine. But then, they, but then they fall under the auspices of the borough. It's yes. way different. Okay, but in, in, do, do they do the same thing in Atlantic City? But once again, what's the objection of the business group? Okay. Is, if they just don't like rules, let me ref refute that, that argument. It's the business community that yells at me about other businesses. Ken's point is valid, that there are businesses out there that their places look shabby, and it's difficult to go to them and say, you need to fix your business up. And you know what they say to us? You're, you're making it difficult for me to make money. And, I mean, Ken's walked the Black Horse Pike. We've walked the Black Horse Pike. We know how difficult it is to convince yeah. people to do things. Not everybody thinks the same way. Well, but I, I think the other provisions within the ordinance are reasonable. There's only one other thing that... Yeah, what else was unreasonable? Pardon me? You said something was unreasonable. The only other thing is the, uh, 
giving certified notice to people within 200. And what's the objection to that? It's very cumbersome. So if Darrow did it, so would you be uh, uh, not? Joyce is well, not. No, she's not. It's what you were yelling at me earlier. Nick's saying, Nick saying if we took it upon, 200 feet. if the Burrows took it upon themselves uh, to do that, action, keep it away from the business owner, would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. What we do is we raise the fee to we'll cover the cost of it. the certified letters and the Burrow we do. Oh, let's, yeah. let's take that. Why not? Yeah. Let's take that under advice. Yeah. To everyone in the audience, does anybody understand that the issue is that everyone has an opinion? Try to protect everyone. And everyone has, 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 wants to be, we don't just do something without notifying other people. The, the, the accusation that I was given was last month that I snuck an ordinance on. It's the anything. It was a public meeting and things like that and stuff like that. But there's a good point to be said that things have people need to be notified. And your argument about maybe paying for it. No, I'm sorry. I, I still have a hard time here because if you do look at the Westfield Ordinance, the municipality does send out the certified yeah. yeah. provide the list. Yes. They do not send. Ah, uh, yes. I don't remember. Yes, can't do that. You can do all. Well, we can do whatever we want. Yeah. We can make things happen. We don't do it for planning board. Next. We don't do it for planning. Let's put it together in our presentation. I, I will. I'll actually I'll work with. Do you think right. though the neighbors have it's any say on what the mural? Should they have that. any input on the mural being that they would see? If it is art and it's on a private business, no. Okay. Can I say I'm one thing against that myself? Pardon? I'm dead against what you just said. If, I get, if I'm living somewhere and you painted something that's offensive to me, and I got to well, look at that paying taxes okay, so every day for a, the whole time, I, I don't want to look at that. Okay. I, First of all, they, there's nobody doing that here. No, you say, yeah, but you but we said. Don't know that. That's uh, it. If you let it go through an arts council, who, uh, once again, who are they? They're, we're elected to, to represent the people. You ain't you aren't elected to represent the people. We we got to deal with all something you you did it, and we're going to take the responsibility of it. But and I'm sure it's going to be very nice. But I'm but, saying, but, but this is where somebody does the decisions and somebody right. who's part time versus somebody who is actually qualified as a, a bachelor of fine arts degree. Yeah, but still, he doesn't have the right to paint something that, that's without it. With, yeah, we have to look at it. This isn't like Maplethorpe. Even though Maplethorpe won his... We can't pass a rule that says... <laughs> okay. he, he, he painted an offensive art, and he actually won in that it was art, and he'd be... Our concern also is... Nobody's doing that. What if it's... We're not, who says that only murals are painted by this group? Where's the rule that says all murals have to come through? Can you imagine one? I know. It, yeah, it, it doesn't. So my it point is, it's not to pick on anybody. It's to just have a process. And I agree that if some other artists were to submit a drawing to us, more than likely we would show it to the reimagining group that get their opinion about it. Well, and, and they had a process. But why? Because we would. But we're allowed by the ordinance to get professional opinions. Right. To yeah, say that's to, great. to say we want and we want help. Is this something and, that's going to be good? If, if possibly we needed help, but we are the governing body. I agree, but we have the right to get. I'm very interested in seeing the feedback and the qualifications of the gentleman that was referenced. I think, I think, I think we, we keep it at that. Yeah. Keep it at that. We, we, right, I don't think we should commit ourselves at this point. Listen. Yeah, I agree. The art community wants certain things, and as, as, as council sits here and wants to review the things that they're requesting, Let's do that. Let's see what right. they want. Let's not jump the gun. And let's let's see what's presented well, to I'll, us. I'll work with them and with right. That sounds we'll good. Right. We're, all, we're all we're all we're all yeah. compromising. We're, we're we're working together. Everything's yeah. fine. Everybody's talking about what they ultimately <coughs> want. Let's just and everything goes through the clock. I think there's, there's two main points, John. The clock. If I'm mistaken. Okay. She's the custodian of records. Okay. So that's who we should be. Yes, because yeah. anything yeah. that goes through, she's responsible legally for anything that comes to the bar. And she tells yeah. us. Correct. So we know. We're training our new clients. What's going on? She's learned anything that goes through them. They are obligated by law to hold, to keep, to record. So, so even things like the exercise equipment should uh, should go through clerk, and then it becomes on the agenda. Tell us what it means. Trust me. Don't you work in government for thirty years? Uh, Didn't you work with government for years? I did, but I remember you. Me and you sitting around, and you told me all oh, the yeah. yeah well, no, uh, the one good thing about going through the professionals is you may not be around for a right. long time. <clears throat> 
you know, Beth is going to be Joyce. I'm not sure when you're going out, but uh, <coughs> that's soon enough, right? Too. <laughs> Sorry, Beth. <laughs> 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 Bill's going to be here for a while. Dan's going to be here for a while. Harry's going to be here to be professional. Shell's going to be here for a while. I don't know. So, but I'll, I'll work with that and I'll get back. I think everybody should take mind, real quick about the bridges. Okay, so I, the last thing was that I remember is I heard from Mark about, and I thought we were going to get a, a new design. But what he had said in there, was about the uh, span, the height, the height profile. Because my original design was using two by sixes with a, a, a 15, 16, or 16, whatever, no more than. So it was six and a half inches. It was too much. So he had suggested that maybe we can use two by fours, and but we have to uh, check to see if the load was adequate for it. Correct. Correct. So and then I have a problem with the sketch. I couldn't read the sketch because it was I so light. I sent you that email. I didn't hear back. And I just didn't know. Okay. It, I couldn't I, tell if you were going six feet or eight feet because it didn't add up if it was all six feet. No, it wasn't. So it looked like there might have been one span. Six, eight, six. And that's six, all I was asking. And that okay. Was, that so was, so was, I, I, will, I will submit a drawing by the end of the week, and what we'll do is we'll substitute in the frame four by fours instead of two by fours so that we can have the weight capacity that you were looking for. And I think. You know, we'll be able to get that through. Right. So that's process. that. The other thing, though, I would have waited for is to know if if uh, an application to the EPA was filed to cross that bridge on what was called number one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? No, we didn't apply anything because we're trying to go underneath without getting a permit at this point. Uh, Just thought we would do the boardwalk. Well, we're trying to do a boardwalk doesn't require it. Yeah, that's why we're trying to keep it underneath, right? Yeah. So the money we're going to spend is on the boardwalk. I think only at this point. But we do have funds for trash cans, signage, other <laughs> improvements. We had a donation for that one that crossed the water. That's we're going to have to get a permit for that. I know we do. That's what I thought we were going to do. And, and it was going to take six months. And do we have a design to submit? And unfortunately, the person who said she was putting money passed away three weeks ago. And now we're waiting to see if the state, the HUD state, will still purchase the bridge. But they wanted to help, you know. Yeah, I mean, I apologize. The government doesn't move very fast. We're not always on top of everything. Uh, I would say once again, this is where the committees need to get together to follow up on things. If we wait till a council meeting, you're, you're, you know, you can monopolize a committee meeting. We have all this other stuff, and it's hard to, to really get into the details of something like that. I don't think we're opposed to applying for permits because I think the long-term plan is to get all this bridges built. So I would argue that we should design all the bridges, do one permit, get it all done. But I'm sorry, I can't show for this project yeah. a law. It has to be broken down into recreation or sustainable or public works or engineering or any other committee to ferry it across. We'll respond to that email and then we'll at least get the boardwalk done. Right? I, 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 will, I will respond to Mark's and okay. lay out what that is. Design is Bye, Thanks, 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 Russ. Thanks, Russ. Appreciate it. Thank you, Rose. Hi. Hi, Michelle. Michelle, I'm in 621, same way I This is too tall for me, people. Um, I just want to reference a few things. Um, uh, you know, early in the meeting, you specifically said that you love to do the stuff for the town and you love to hand it over to everyone else to with the knowledge to get that all done. And that is what Reimagine Ronomy has been, but also, all this stuff Reimagine Ronomy has done and is doing and is doing in the future, we absolutely, about the mural ordinance, in no way were we necessarily fighting every single thing about the ordinance. We were saying that parts of it, and we absolutely will compromise on the thing. There are parts of it that are very gray because parts of art are very gray. I may despise that someone has 22 bunny rabbit things all over their lawn at Easter time, but I have to look at it across the street from me. I may hate a political sign that's on someone else's house, but I have to look at it every day. That's just the town. What I mean is... You know, but we're, distinct, we're distinguishing between private property and private speech yeah. and public. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So there's a big difference. There is. 
However, it's a public art. Yes, I'm, I'm all on it. There are certain things we've talked about tonight that, and John knows, being on the green team and literally trying every Sunday for the last however many Sundays there have been this year to get Runnymede the silver award as opposed to the bronze award. But even three years ago, getting the bronze award was an absolute taxing situation, as you know, because you put a lot of work into it also. Reimagine Runnymede has literally taken up the most amount of points besides some of the energy stuff on, you know, the EV vehicle stuff. And that is also <laughs> all, all, the, all the cogs and all the wheels that have been turning in the last few years. Most of those points come from Reimagine Runner <coughs> for getting us to silver. And that is a huge part. And that is, um, Patty, I, I know you don't like to call it a park and you want to call it the woods, but having trails for the public and having an RC car, car thing for people to do correctly and not out of control and not messily, these are, these are points. These are what we've been sitting around every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock going, oh my god, yes, we can, get, we can add five more points. Yes, if we can say that this was advertised on Facebook, we get 10 more points because nothing that you guys discuss means anything to those bronze and silver and gold points in the communities unless the advertisement is part of it. And that was our biggest problem three years ago that we had to be up till two in the morning trying to literally pull in sources from everywhere to find if people had posted it on a school LED sign, on Facebook, on the, you know, the town website is a whole other situation. But, you know, that's why we quickly put up the Reimagine Runway website and the Now the Green Team website that I have put up both of them so that when the green team for sustainability says, where is this event advertised? Or where is this information being put into the public? It's not on the Runmeet New Jersey website. It is not. It's now on our green team website or on the, on the Runmeet New Jersey website. But it should be on the website. Oh, a billion percent. Okay, so yes. are you aware so that's what you forgot. Are you aware that we pay a fee for someone to update everything? The information just has to be Transmitted to that a number of times. I have emailed Joyce or whomever, or and the. Um, Could you forward us those emails that she or sent and Miss Tinto ignored, so I can? I don't think she's saying that. Oh no, what's she saying? First of all, <laughs> first of all, she's got all, all valid points. We've already we're backtracking because we have already decided. Mayor and Council have decided. We've talked about it. We've proved it. Uh, a stipend for someone to help uh, facilitate getting the information from all the organizations and civic, and civic groups to uh, the uh, borough website, and we haven't done it yet because we're all part time. Yeah, but this is different, though. She's Miss Overson has been appointed by the mayor to be the deputy of sustainability, correct? And she's the uh, you're the she's what's your what's your position? She's a vice president. I don't know. Chair. You've been appointed by the okay. She's a vice chair. And you get compensated, correct? Yes, but yes. that has okay. to do with the website. But what I'm pointing though is that she can transmit that information. No, but I to can, that. because I have to say yes to doing that. That's that, that I, I've been appointed to to be paid to be on the green team with John. And that's us meeting endlessly to try and get the town. But you said all getting the points. points you have to advertise. No, no, no. It, we have to show that things in the community, whether it's a school, that, you know, whatever. Okay. Once yeah, again, it has to be promoted. I would, uh, if your point is the council has for at least four years put money in the budget for arts. I think on your ordinance starts off with in the, in the continuing support of arts in the community, mayor and council want to do this. So I'm hoping you see that we're all for this. So I, I, I absolutely am. Okay. And what I'm saying is the speed at which we've been working, because what was the deadline for that, John, for that we have to have the, um, <coughs> Like all of these things, the ten thousand dollars for the you know the grant that Ken got for um, the mural that just got finished, all of those things. Just I mean, we did it quicker than we did three years ago, you know, because we've been doing it every Sunday. But that had to be all that information had to be in there with up to six JPEGs or images and supporting documents. Absolutely, I did the application three absolutely. years ago. Yeah, right. and but. <laughs> You know, I was the one getting the actual imagery three years ago to to show that it was promoted. And I did it again this time with Kathy, with John. And some of these things did have to be 
all of the stuff that we're talking about, the the art, the you know car thing or Remet or Rony Lake Park, it has to be certain things. You have to oh, show yeah. that the community can go there. It you can't just be that it's happy but little you, but, you, but but you also went and submitted about the wildlife. Yes. Play it. Yes. But you're not following it. And we absolutely are because if how are you following it? Running, if you really read it, you're not following it. And what you're saying is you had to do all of this quickly, like we had to do last week. Right. Look, you're doing all this quickly, but you forgot to notify the governing body of what you were doing. I am not specifically talking about the most recent year. I'm talking about... I'm talking about from day one. I'm talking about from the first art thing that you ever done. Nobody's ever come to us and asked for approval because that's what you should, that's what you need to do. But I don't want to belabor this, but that's not true. If we've had... It is uh, true, I, I know, I That's know. for you. I... <laughs> I don't want to belabor this, but and we've had people on as you know that is on that are on council at since we started the heart and soul stuff that it was necessary that they were on council. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying these things are so intertwined, and our perception is that we've all been one yes. thing because of how we've been working for the last more than three years, but especially with the green team to get this town the status that you wanted it to have. And so, so much of this has been part of that. And I just wanted to bring that up, that Reimagine Runway and our decisions to make the parks the way they are and to have as many people in the community enjoy what they're now enjoying, whether it's the parks or the arts, that all that has been part of Green Team, part of Reimagine Runway for the tech. And so I just wanted to say that, that it's, we haven't been, you know, in a little bubble circling around, a little gyroscope, just trying to have our own art fund. We have been doing this and putting it in an actual sequential, very professional way to get the town more points. Yeah, I saw the application. The server doesn't know if they didn't see the application. It was extensive. And you're 100% right. All these activities were things that followed you know, the guidelines from sustainability. So yes, everything you guys did was phenomenal. The only thing I'll say is I would like to see it all on the Borough website, and so we have to make a decision either to either to make some change, but we are paying a yearly fee. We want to utilize that. You're paying a hosting service. Uh, hosting and a posting. And I that gentleman will update as part of his yearly fee. Okay, but I've contacted that and never heard that. Because you're not the you're representative. Not the representative. Well, it has to go through the uh, yeah, okay. clerk. Well, can we change that? Because it would probably make sense that. No, the reason we go through the clerk is because yeah, we don't to... want something. So we need to have that individual who get the stipend to do these things. No, yeah, she does. No, 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 the idea is that we don't want to do something that's inappropriate. I'll give an example. Had we advertised the remote, the remote control, Ms. Pinto would immediately say they didn't fill out the paperwork to go to the police or fire department. Right. They didn't no, do that. You, so there's a reason why we have professionals. It should go through. No, no, no. But, but the person that we, would, that we are considering hiring to get a stipend to handle all of the promotions that we want to do, just like Pine Hill. They and still have to go through Georgia. They, they just go, they go through you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No matter what we do. That would apply to anybody. Right? Anybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, I wasn't anybody. saying that I was trying to make changes yeah. to the website. I was like, I was asking how changes were made. Yeah. No, and the hosting service never got back to me. Yeah, they're not going to respond. I understand that. But. They're they're not but I, John and I both were asking questions about who was responsible for the specific things that needed to end up on the pre-measure. Myself and uh, Harry does some of the trash things. Okay. Harry takes care of the other. Right. Yeah. Road closures, things like that. Right. So, yeah. No, and that's no I think everything, once again, guys, okay. I know it's in late. Everything is wonderful. Right. Everything is wonderful. I, I, if, if the worst thing I have to do is fight with people over volunteerism and <laughs> arts, this is wonderful, you know, that we have all these people engaged in doing things. I think, I said earlier, it's just moving so fast. It's moving faster than the normal government process. You're right. If we are, as Russ said, one of only a few towns doing murals, but I would argue we're probably one of the few towns that has a lot of murals happening. There's no other town our size with the, the, uh, the kind of stuff going on. Correct? And there's nobody out. Nobody no, this, right, right. With this type of demographic, doing all this stuff. Well, There's like no you way. said earlier to someone else that said, I don't know if it was about the trash bags or not, but you said people don't, you know, we don't want to have people have to pay. We don't, people don't like when they get the certified letters because it has a negative connotation. It does. 
So I don't think that that was one of our biggest concerns is that having a fee for a business owner, you know, even, you know, it, unless it's minimal, but notifying people that here's this thing that's about to happen in your neighborhood is an immediate negative connotation unless it is a, a community. Well, then you know what you should do? I invite you to come to our next planning board meeting and notice how nobody shows up. And everyone is required to get a certified letter and no one shows up. So most people are very positive. The only thing that we want to do is to be able to say that we let you know. Okay. They don't have veto power. Let's be clear. People who maybe don't want their neighbor to build a shed show up and say, I really don't like the shed, but if the person has a good argument and it's professional and all that, the planning board approves it. The only thing that we're doing is, by law, we're just trying to give them space because we're deviating from the original ordinance. Now you're saying we're not deviating from anything. The only thing we were saying is, is that the only, the only thing different about murals is they're, they're not enjoyed by the person who's in the building. You ever walk across the street and look at your own house? I do that. I want to see what my neighbors look at my house. What about, the, what about the massage building, the, the, the picture on the side that's... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Ken's point is valid. We need to start doing it. We need to start going after okay. people, but at the same time. We're finally getting the mo we're finally getting a momentum happening in this community, thanks to the arts, that we can maybe go to someone and say your business doesn't look good. One of the things I'm thrilled about the chamber is we want them to go talk to people and say, your business looks looks shiny. You're you you know, you know, something like that. Uh, I agree, it's all coming together. But we have to have some kind of regulation. I'm not afraid of anything this group's gonna do. I'm afraid of I'm afraid that someone else and I showed the picture of the mural in Glendora, and that's a sign. Because it says surf pro line. Right. That's not a mural. No, so no. and that's why you have to have some kind of regulation. That's all. Okay. The mural the mural simply says we support murals. And this is the definition of a mural. We're making it a permitted use. Okay. That's what it does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Anyone else? Thanks, Michelle. Cool. No chicken <laughs> arguments tonight? Yes. <laughs> Yes. All right. Steve Singh, I'm for 456 Center out. Um, just on the pump of things. For the trash can, the bottle I had a suggestion. Uh, look at a community collection event and get everyone on a box of trash can or something. Just so they don't think, you know, it's the town coming down on us. I'm not sure. I don't know. Or just a suggestion, or um, it was suggested to turn them into uh, composting. Second, has it ever been discussed getting um, arrows at the traffic lights along the black horse? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, had a we had a traffic study done, and uh, they decided that the traffic that was a white horse bike down in Deptford in North Jersey was going to be affected by us changing the scheme. Like it was nice to do. Ah, okay. No arrows. And we don't own those rights. And we don't own them. Sure, so. so. But yeah, it's happening. We said we tried to get like the green light on one side, red on the other. No, can't do that because it's going to affect down in Barrington. And we try to get the other way to the mall. No, it's going to affect the shoppers at Dick's Sporting Goods. You know, it's just. It was a terrible crazy. study. Yeah. Terrible study. Well, it was a study that the state you did. Was yeah. there anything else? I apologize then. Uh, I, I, I did want to talk on behalf of the chicken people. Okay. Real, real quick. Um, so, chicken people. Yes, chicken After some, uh, you know, quick research, you know, establishing chickens in the backyard, they need to be at least eight weeks old, preferably up to 24 weeks. So they're weathered for the full months. Okay. Prolonging the whatever needs to be done, even two months, will push us to some issue. So I think we just... Well, once again, it was, it was brought to us, I think, the previous month. I, you know, I, I hope that we're trying, you, you saw what we just did, we just postponed an ordinance because we got accused of moving too fast with an ordinance. And now we're working on the other side. You know, and I, you know, we're just trying to do our best to try to get it done right. You mentioned 30 days to pass an ordinance. You can do it in 30 days. Is there any way that we can help reach out to other communities? I believe there was emails sent. There were some. There were some um, uh, 
ordinances that were recommended. Right. There was many communities in the county that have done this and they've done pilot programs. So we've got a tremendous amount of information from all these different communities. We just got to kind of just kind of put it together so that it just is good enough for here. You know, the amount we, of, have, we have to customize it to us. Yeah, just not too much, but as you can see, we tried to customize something and we got criticized for customizing something. Uh, I'm not going to say that. Well, I'm just not going to say But, you know, and the people who would be like the chicken committee and you two sit down one night, hatch things out, and just get it done. Uh, once again, I am not opposed to anything. Um, once the ordinance is, is, is put together, the, the, the public can see it. It's, it's advertised. Anybody can get a copy of it? Just like this group. I'm actually surprised council kicked the can down the road for the art ordinance, but I'm okay with it. Um, you know, the chicken ordinance, I got no problem with any dialogue back and forth to get it done. Here, here's my suggestion there. Um, I know it is our intention to get it to council. I think it should go to council's eyes first for feedback. And once that's done, we'll send it to a vote to a good coming advocate for it. And, you know, I just wanted that help move the process along because you said maybe next time. But it would be nice to have the I, I thought I said I said I anticipate next time. At the next at, at our at this meeting next month I anticipate yeah, next caucus. It, it wasn't a very I it, it's okay. I'm, 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 you know why? I'm not gonna make a firm <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. That, <laughs> we don't even be like, we just we make, we, we, they, and I apologize because it's so hard to get things done. I mean, I hope you see that there's opinions and we, we don't try to shut anybody down and we ask everybody their opinions. We're doing the best we can. I, 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 I feel for you, I understand there's a time constraint. I think we're going to do the best because I know the group sent stuff over almost within the week after the meeting, so we had stuff. It just, as you can see, we're dealing with, I hope you, you pay attention to the whole meeting you saw, we're, we're dealing with a sewer problem, we're dealing with roads, there's a lot, and I apologize. We really need to bring these back to committees. We need to get the committees to iron these things out, get them done, and get them brought to the council. So, you know. What committee handles chickens? Probably the best. I hate to say, I would push it on. I would, it's a great question. I'd actually say, but it doesn't fit in any, any it's animals, and it, it is a, a sustainable thing, I would argue. Because that, that I think it touches both, doesn't it? Touch the animal, and it's an animal issue. So, and it's code enforcement, which falls, well, sort of under a scalp. So I think code enforcement's a Here's the thing, and I, I brought this up the last time. It's gonna fall on Bill and his officers. So he should have some input. Yeah, yeah. because, I understand from other towns that's how it gets enforced because code enforcement is involved and because Bill is in charge of it, the, so, you know, the I chief have, is the one. Yeah. So he's going to have to be the one dealing with this going forward. Yeah. I have to say, I, I'm, I'm not a, in favor of chickens, but I'm not against them either. I talked to a, a 14 different towns and I called them up he should be before, before I got sick and before I had my operation. And uh, almost all of them, one town said they had a minor problem, but the rest said because they're regulated and they have they a committee that takes care of it, that they don't have any problems. So it doesn't go up to code. Code I mean, no, enforcement is rarely involved. rarely involved in it. You know, and it's just like anything else. And I'm just gonna put, my name's Heather Farrow, 314 Shepherd Ave. Uh, since our last meeting, I don't know names, but I have heard through the grapevine that there may be some chickens floating around already in front of me that have been here for a little while and we haven't are had you, any issues. Are you, oh, you don't I don't know. Are you making a complaint? No, no. Oh. I'm saying people, there might be, we haven't had any issues. There's been no chickens floating they're around they're so far. So if there are people. Do you hear about the tree them. falling in the woods? Yeah. Well, I don't know any. I, I, I've listened all my life. I so literally don't know one that has. I personally don't know anyone with chickens in town. But I've heard that there are people who have them apparently without being here's allowed a, to. Here's a funny story. And you have not been called yet. <laughs> so there are no chickens floating around. Behind my house is the open field where the hockey rink used to be. I'm on Mitchell. I look right out there. Late people were complaining along the fence line. I was talking to Mr. Lozano the other day about it. I walk out in the corner. This one lady's right there. She's complaining about it. And I said, is that a rooster in your yard? 
And she goes, yes. Yeah. And I said, oh, I said, there's 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 I said, let me turn around. I'm and people go follow the rules all the time. Do you notice? I'm going to go away. You get rid of the rooster, and we'll come back. Yeah. And the rooster was gone. Yes, yes. That's what I mean. Like, I've heard that they're, so luckily. But there are people who don't follow the rules. Yes. Well, we do. That's why we're here. Well, I have we never have talked to Believe me, one of our falcons will get that chicken in and then take it off. No. Oh, I know. My husband keeps saying that, especially where we are. He's Wait, like, you, they're everywhere. I, I live down the street yes. from you, and I, I've actually had the bald eagles and four bald eagles in my yard. Well, there's two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there anything else? Uh, no. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. you coming up. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Excited? Bring a pop. Okay. Is there anyone else with a pop? We're going to speak. Now you're not doing it tonight, huh? No, no, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. I, I needed to be told that. Uh, is there something you'd like to make a motion to close the public portion? I'll make a motion to close the public portion. The motion is, is passed here, second by Mr. Lawton. All in favor? Aye. Is there any other discussion before we adjourn? No. I am leaving. And uh, do whatever you guys want to do. Have a safe trip. You do whatever you want. I don't care. I leave on Thursday at 8 o'clock. Is there a motion to, to adjourn? I'll make a motion to close this meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Ms. Passio, second by Mr. Robinson. All in favor? Aye. Aye.